going on adventurers how are you welcome to another one of our slant alpha adventures we are continuing tonight in the wings over new england training flights presented to us by the boston virtual artcc on that sim a series of 24 i'm sorry let me let me state this correctly and, and, and in an order that makes sense <laughs> it's a series of 30 total training flights six vfr followed by 24 ifr and they uh, they can be flown anytime that Boston ARTCC is online. Actually, they can be flown anytime because they're they're completely self-study. So they provide a uh, for each of the flights. Let's actually look at the website. Might be so this is the Boston Virtual ARTCC website, and under this heading here, wings uh, in introduction and getting started guides. I think it's it's pretty straightforward to kind of see what's going on with the the flights and look at the flights themselves. And the idea is that if you fly these six VFR flights followed by these 24 IFR flights in succession, one after the other, uh, each one provides, again, some lesson material and then a flight that you would, you know, kind of fly on your own. And uh, for each successive one you do, it builds upon the procedures and, and uh, knowledge and techniques that are taught in the previous lesson. So the deeper you get into it, the more advanced and complex the procedures come. Uh, obviously, VFR procedure tends to be a little bit less, less complex overall. IFR procedure tends to be a little bit more complex. That's why there's you know, four times as many flights for the IFR portion than the VFR portion. But once you fly all 30 of them, you've got a pretty in-depth understanding of VFR and IFR procedure. Again, they, they don't really teach how to fly the plane, but they teach you know, a lot of the procedural knowledge, including how to read many of the sectional charts, en route charts, and terminal charts, you know, instrument approaches, SIDs and STARS, and that sort of thing. We're picking up tonight with the Wings IFR number 7. We last left our heroes here at uh, Keene, Dylan Hopkins Airport in Keene, North, I'm sorry, New Hampshire, Keene NH, New, New Hampshire, not North anything. And uh, like I said, for each one of these flights, kind of read through and you see what the general gist is. This one is going to be an LDA approach, uh, which is essentially the same as uh, either a localizer or a, an ILS approach, but it's not lined up with uh, a specific runway, or if it is lined up with a specific runway, it's a few degrees offset. So there might be a turn on short final that you have to make, and that is the case here. I think it's six degrees offset from the runway heading just because of terrain clearance. So we run into these from time to time where there's terrain and the uh, the approach course, the instrument approach course, of course, meant to be flown when you don't have visibility, you know, when you have a cloud cover or what have you. But, uh, you know, following that approach course keeps you clear of obstacles, and then you have to make kind of a short turn on a short final to, uh, to to line yourself up with the runway once you break through the cloud cover. So you can read through the, the, the flight description on your own, and then it points you toward the charts and such that you need. Of course, I've put the route into Sky Vector on my own, and I've pulled the terminal charts here from the, the FAA's Digital Terminal Procedures page. Uh, I've got the airport diagram for uh, for Keene. For uh, for yeah, Dylan Hopkins, all we, it's, we, got, we, got, we call it Keene because it's K-E-E-N. And it is in Keene, New Hampshire, so we just kind of call it Keene. We're parked up here at the terminal. It looks like the buildings are all rendering flat here for some reason, so uh, just a weird quirk in the uh, in the rendering for Microsoft Flight Sim, not picking up these buildings and turning them into 3D as it normally does. But at any rate, we'll check the wind direction here, figure out which runway we want to take off on, and we'll go from there. Let's... Take a moment to say hi to some friends. We've got Captain Scientist checking in. We've got Al South MIA who is here. Thank you guys for checking in tonight. Hopefully we'll get uh, a chance to get all three of these that we want to get done tonight. Seven, eight, and nine. Now the catch is we don't have um, coverage from Boston ARTCC controllers right now on VATSIM. So you can, as I mentioned, you can kind of fly these anytime you want. If you want to get credit, they have a, a little kind of a score sheet on their website to... to uh, let you know who has completed what, and then you get special recognition if you complete all 30. So in order to be evaluated, whether you've done it properly or not done it properly, you, you should do it when they have uh, air traffic control coverage on. Uh, we don't have the case, that that being the case tonight. This is a cool tutor, tutorial series you're doing, says Old School Minnesota. Hey, Old School, hey, thanks for stopping in. If you are into Old School type flying, you are on the right channel. 
as slant alpha means we do this all through old school radio navigation. We, we typically don't use uh, GPS or RNAV capability in our planes. We do have a, a Garmin unit in this simulated uh, Muni Ovation, the uh, Carinato Muni Ovation for Flight Sim 2020, but we ignore it. We pretend it's not there. Pretend that at one point I got frustrated trying to figure out how to, how to use it, and I probably just took a hammer and smashed it or, or tossed it out the window or both. So... Uh, so we don't have that, uh, we pretend that that Garmin's not there. When we fly our Douglas DC-3 or we fly our, our Prop Strike Studios Bush Plane 172, you know, we've, we actually have planes that we don't have RNAV capability simulated in. So that's mostly what we do on this channel, although we do switch it up from time to time. But uh, thanks for stopping in, man. hope that you will enjoy. At any rate, like I said, if you want to get credit for performing the flight and you want the controllers to tell you whether you have or have not done it properly... Uh, you definitely want to do it when Boston ARTCC has coverage. Tonight, that's not the case. Uh, however, I have already gotten credit for this flight. I've done this series once before. And so tonight, I'm just going to talk you through what the radio calls would be with the controller as best as I can. And I should be able to get pretty close. So it uh, shouldn't be too bad. But I'll talk through the, the, uh, the, uh, the radio calls more or less as you would hear them. Of course, they go through some of that stuff in the training material too so if you read through not JK and this with the slant alpha emotes thank you so much JK for renewing that subscription got a six month subscription going JK oh you got that half coin now that that subscriber emote now half complete there for you which is awesome got some other friends to say hi to we'll catch up with you guys in just a moment but I just wanted to finish this explanation here so I'll talk you through the radio calls that you would get but again if you want to get credit for performing these flights and you want the controller to be able to tell you whether you well, you've, you've met the standards and you've flown the approach procedures correctly you definitely want to do that with coverage uh, Boston Center is obviously the most straightforward way to know that you've got enough coverage but there are certain of these that you could fly with just Boston approach online or even uh, even one of the more regional approaches, depending on each flight. Each flight kind of takes you to it in a different area of the airspace here, the Boston ARTCC. So the other nice thing is if you fly all 30 in succession, each one picks up where the last one left off. So it ends up being a pretty comprehensive tour, hopping all over the airspace. And it's kind of a neat little um, neat little introductory tour to, uh, to what all is contained up here in the Boston ARTCC, which covers upstate New York, pieces of it. Um, pretty much all of New England, and uh, yeah, I think that covers it, Long Island as well. So, um, so who else do we have to say hi to? We got uh, Melvin says, "Why is Boston dodging you?" Well, I know that Sheed's got his 10-hour marathon scheduled for tomorrow. I also know that they've got some big events coming up that they probably are just kind of taking a, a little bit of a breather tonight. I know Evan was on earlier for a couple of hours, so I guess I'm just missing. Them. Monday's been kind of spotty. Monday's not a real big night for them apparently, although, you know. It, uh, Boston's on kind of seven days a week, more or less. But like I said, we, we missed having by a couple hours earlier this evening. Cold Fork 85 says, would a GNS 530 count as slank off? Yes, it would. Any kind of, um, any kind of Garmin unit that can, that can load in a procedure, a, uh, a SID or a STAR or an instrument procedure, uh, gives you that RNAV capability, which gives you that slant golf or slant lima. I think I caught up. Uh, Melvin says, I used to fly Moncton Monday with them all the time. Yeah, I I, uh, I haven't seen that on the calendar in a little while. I don't know if they're still doing that or not. Let me just check a couple of these messages here, make sure it's nothing uh, urgently important. I'll have to check on that later. All right. Very good, guys. Um, so the flight tonight... We were we kind of skimmed through, and I didn't uh, didn't go over it in detail. But we're going from Dylan Hopkins up to uh, Hartford Brainerd, and this is the route that comes off of the preferred route database. It's also contained in the training material. Uh, oh, we're starting up here. Sorry, uh, Dylan Hopkins is up here, New Hampshire. See, there's icing warnings north of us, but I do have real world weather engaged, and the icing warnings subside if you, if we fly south from here. So fingers crossed, we won't run into any issues. Uh, but southbound to the Gardner VOR, and then we'll track along this 209 outbound radio from Gardner. We'll switch over, uh, at this point, Devani, as we join the Victor 1 south and westbound from there. And this uh, 053 into Hartford, which is going to be for us a 233, right? Because it's going to be 180 degrees opposite. And then from Hartford VOR, 
we will pick up the instrument approach, which is the LDA, which is this one here. The LDA Runway 2. Off of the Hartford VOR, we have a, a feeder leg and a procedure turn. I'm sorry, a hold, yeah, hold turn. Uh, the, the specs for this particular training say to expect vectors to final for this, so we won't have to do this, this kind of very complex uh, hold turn. Um, but uh, but we'll we'll present we'll pretend that we're going to get vectored to final, uh, even if there's no air traffic controller online, because that's what this rating calls for. Uh, this this very compli complicated turn that you would do from the Hartford VOR is covered in a later rating, and I don't want to since I'm doing these as examples for those who want to learn to do these ratings. I don't want to overcomplicate things for this particular uh, one, so we will just kind of pretend. Once we pass Hartford, we'll just kind of go out this way, and then we'll vector ourselves onto a kind of a 30-degree intercept, and we'll pick up the uh, pick up the LDA approach inbound. So that's how we'll do it for tonight. And then, of course, we might in, end up with air traffic control coverage. I mean, it tends to kind of pop on unannounced sometimes, and we've had it before where we've started without it, and then we've got it as we've taxied out for our first departure. So a lot of ways this could go. And then, of course, there's the uh, there's the airport diagram. And we'll decide as we get airborne whether we will be flying this uh, straight into runway two or whether we will fly this as a circling approach. Um, interestingly, there is an obstacle departure procedure out of Dillon Hopkins, but the obstacle departure procedures are not actually covered until um, wings flight number nine, which we'll be doing later tonight. But uh, in interesting to see that there. And that is found under this takeoff minimums. That's what we opened up there. And then you have to just scroll up and find the one for... This is, this is the airport and facility um, directory. And you just have to scroll HJ uh, to the name of your town. There's Keene. And then you read through. And uh, so we've got nice, uh, vis you know, nice visibility here. So we don't really need this to procedure. We just have to maintain visual separation from the terrain as we go but if you're taking off from a non-towered airport in instrument conditions you definitely want to be looking at this and then indeed for wings ifr number nine we will be uh we will be simulating that even if we have visibility there we will be kind of following that instrument departure that, that obstacle procedure obstacle departure procedure just as part of that exercise so we will uh get there when we get there but for tonight our route includes just going to the Gardner VOR. So we'll get to the point where we're setting up our radios accordingly in just a moment. But I think I want to go ahead and get in the airplane and get started, guys. We're going to hope to be airborne by about 12 minutes from now, which means I do kind of have to rush as I did a little bit of a long intro there. Uh, but we've got all the controls set and synced and checked. And we've already set our starting fuel load. Parking brake is set. All switches are off. We can get the battery switch on. The uh, nav and beacon lights up above, two and three. And uh, we'll get the fuel selector on, which it already is. Get the props and mix full forward. Magnetos can be rotated into the both position. And uh, I don't think I did a... Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I did, did miss the fuel pump on. Fuel, fuel boost pump should come on as well. There we go. We'll check the prop area and make sure that it's clear. It used to be kind of a sim joke, but now there's always kind of people walking around in flights in 2020, and you want to make sure you're not about to decapitate anybody. There we go. Oil pressure does indeed come up right away into the green range, so that's good. We can uh, shut the boost pump off, and every, all the other temps and pressure is starting to move into their normal range. We get the battery and the alternator on. Uh, let's see. I like to set the fuel readout to endurance, even though that doesn't really help as much on the ramp. Uh, but when we get airborne, we can verify that we've got as much fuel on board in terms of hours and minutes as we think we do. Uh, did I get the boost pump off? Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm alternating radio master. Yeah, I just lost my place. Okay. We'll go over here and we'll turn the marker beacon sounds off. We saw in a previous lesson, coming into this airport, I believe, that we we found cause to turn, turn that back on because we needed to know when we were crossing that outer marker. Uh, but we've got nice visual conditions here. And uh, shouldn't have any visibility problems for our arrival, and we might probably won't need that marker beacon. Uh, for the most part, I'd like to have that off. 
but uh, there might there are cases where you want to have that on and you need to know when you're crossing those beacons. We'll put the message screen up over the GPS as I mentioned earlier. We do fly this slant alpha, which means radio nav only, means no RNAV capability, no cheating with the moving map. You actually have to figure out where you are based on VOR radials and such and cover that when we get airborne. You want to know what slant alpha, slant lima, slant off, you want to know all, what all those mean? There's a tutorial right over on the uh, YouTube channel. The link's on the lower left-hand side of your screen and a playlist called Vatsum Tutorials. We've got another tutorial playlist over there where we're, we've got all of these Wings Over New England to demo flights stored as well. So if you want to see, uh, if, you, if you want to perform this series but you want to see them done first to get an idea of what, you, what to expect, you can check that play, playlist out also. Uh, what do we do? We get the uh, secondary radios. We're already on, it looks like, so we're good there. And transponder's on as well. Okay, good. So everything is uh, set. We have already sent our flight plan, but I'll show you quickly what we sent. Basically just uh, Dylan Hopkins to Hartford. This was the route that they told us in the lesson to file, so we did. Departure time is uh, nine minutes from now. Uh, time and route. Uh, again, if you want to know how I calculate time and route and fuel estimates, there's another playlist over there on the tutorials channel. Uh, total uh, fuel available again from my spreadsheet, four hours and 19 minutes. Again, then you can check out that tutorial over there if you want to see uh, how I come up with the numbers that I come up with for time and fuel. Cruise speed. We're going with about 180 for the Mooney. We're going to we're going to do this first one at 6,000 feet. The uh, preferred route database lists this as 10,000 or below. But if you go over here to Sky Vector and you look at uh, the minimum en route altitudes, you see this is 3,000 here, 3,000 here, and uh, 3,600 there. So you got to file at least basically, because that leg's 3,600, you got to file at least 4,000. And I filed 6,000 just because it's a little bit of a further flight, and I wanted to make sure that we got some fuel economy in. So, so you you get your minimum your minimum from the minimum en route segments maximum from the PRD and you can file anywhere in between and again it's a uh, we're actually I, I, I looked at that again in the opposite direction we're starting up here we're coming down this way so it is a westbound flight overall okay it's a it's a it starts off southeast bound but it is an overall westbound flight so that's an even numbered thousand altitude and again with 4,000 being your minimum 10,000 being your maximum based on the uh, criteria that I gave you. So I've already filed that on Vatsim before the stream started, um, but that's uh, that's good to go. just wanted to show you that just in case. Oh, and, and I do want to kind of just remind you, you do want to put the Wings IFR-7 in the remarks, and then when you call for your clearance, let them know that you want to do that Wings IFR-7, because uh, they will need to just confirm that they have the controller coverage to evaluate you, and they aren't too busy to evaluate you. All right. So, where does that leave us on our checklist? We'll pick up from where we left off here. Uh, we got the flight plan filed. We'll check a METAR, which I always kind of forget to do while I'm already looking at the... Um, uh, whoops, no, dot METAR. <laughs> and then the ICAO, which is keen. Uh, one, two, zero at three knots. So, kind of from the southeast, but not very strong. Altimeter is 2988. So we'll set 2988, and it looks like we want to take off to the southeast, which is good. I think that's a short taxi for us. Um, so 2988, we'll get that set in the altimeter here. Uh, 2990, and down two clicks. The field elevation is 488, and uh, so we're reading pretty close to that in the altimeter. So always good to cross check once you've set your altimeter to cross check that the altitude is reading close to the field elevation that you know you're sitting at that way you know a that your altimeter is not broken and b that your weather simulation is working properly the latter not being a real world check obviously uh so we got the heading okay we got the sorry field elevation verified comm radios set as needed well for us that just means 22.8 there's, uh, we're going to be on VATSIM's universal Unicom slash CTAF frequency tonight until a controller pops up. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit confusing. I'm going to talk through the radio calls that we would make with the controller, but then I'm going to have to make the CTAF calls on the uh, common traffic advisory. So it's going to be a little bit confusing. I'm going to have to kind of do double duty there. But I'll try to explain to you what's what when, I, when I'm doing that. Um, 
So we we would obtain our clearance right now. We'd say uh, Boston Center or whoever, which, whichever controller we're getting our clearance from. Boston Center, Mooney 514 Delta Victor is on the ground at uh, Dylan Hopkins. We have the current weather. We're IFR to Hartford Brainerd with the wings IFR 7. And they would say clear to Hartford Brainerd as filed. Maintain mm, whatever they would say, probably 4,000. Expect uh, 6,000 one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 133 point whatever they're normally on. And squawk whatever they whatever squawk they assign you. So you read all that back. And they're going to say, Mooney 514 Delta Victor, read back correct. Um, released for departure, void if not airborne by whatever, 0040 Zulu. If not airborne um, by 0040, report intentions uh, no later than 0045 this channel. Uh, frequency change to advisor is approved. Report airborne. So, something along those lines. That basically means that you're, you've been authorized to enter the controlled airspace given the flight plan that you filed and got approved on. Um, so, so the thing that happens is, at a towered field, your release is negotiated by the local controllers there. The ground and tower controller makes sure that you have a release before they let you taxi out and take off. Uh, so you don't hear that word release too much at a towered field. Uh, at a non-towered field, you actually have to discuss your release with the controller, and they might say, hold for release, meaning that... Um, we don't. You're not allowed to leave yet, uh, but call us when you're first in line at the runway. Or they might say you're released as long as you leave between now and blank time. So uh, either one of those two things would be the case. If they say you know hold for release, report number one at the you know at, at the runway or number one for departure. That means you just go about your business. As soon as you pull up the whole short line, you check in. You say hey, we're number one for departure. Uh, and they say, okay, really, and then they'll give you that same speech that I just gave you. Release for departure, report if you know, not, avoid you know, if not airborne by blank time, uh, report airborne this frequency. And then sometimes they give you that spiel of if you're not airborne by blank time, uh, advise intentions no later than blank other time. So kind of the, the different scenarios that you might get there. Uh, but let's say we were told uh, avoid if not, if not airborne by 0040. All right, so frequency change change advisor is approved. Now we're going to be back on Unicom anyway because we need to let the traffic at this airport know what we're doing and uh, coordinate movement with them, some of which might be VFR traffic as well. So that all being said, hopefully that is all somewhat clear as mud for you. I'm sure there will be questions. Let me resume my... Uh, my checklist now. Um, so we were we would have been given a squawk code. Right now we uh, we do not have a squawk code, but we're IFR. The kind of that sim tradition is if you're in the U.S. and you're IFR, but you're not in a controlled airspace, to use 2200. We'll get the altitude reporting mode on. That's not a real world thing. That's a that sim thing. Uh, obviously, if you're IFR in the real world, you would you would have air traffic control coverage because there's no such thing as hey center's just not on tonight, unless they've all got COVID, which is a different thing and they'd route you around their airspace. Uh, but on that sim, sometimes it's just like, hey, there's just no controllers in this area. So 2200 is... It doesn't really matter what you're squawking if there's no controllers around, but 2200 is kind of the tradition. Um, get the mode altitude on. Nav and ADF tuners, let's get them set. We are going to uh, initially be going to this Gardner VOR 110.6. We're going to be just going direct to it from wherever we happen to be. So when we tune... 110.6 we can uh, yeah there we go 110.6 and we might not receive it just yet but we oh yeah we are actually so we'll spin that around until it centers and then it's going to be kind of southeast bound if we know now it's going to change slightly from once we get airborne we're not going to still be directly on that radio but that's close enough and we are oh and I actually Yes, I did. I put I put some controls on my my yoke for the for the for the course and the heading bug, which should make life easier for me here. We're gonna depart. The wind was one two zero. So what are we gonna depart? We got a, a runway one four at uh, Dylan Hopkins. So we'll depart on one four. So we'll just set the bug to runway heading just for now. That'll help us make sure that we're on the correct runway when we go. Good, good afternoon from and hello from Seattle. Gotsmack is here. 
Godsmack, uh, great band, by the way. Uh, not spelled that way, but still a great band. Glad to have you with us. Are, and are they from Seattle? They might be from Seattle. Anyway, welcome aboard. Appreciate having you here. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, where'd we go? On the checklist. Uh, initial altitude. So we filed 6,000, and we don't have any air traffic control to tell us not to go to 6,000, so we'll just assume 6,000. Obviously, if you're initially cleared to some other altitude first, you want to make sure you set that rather than 6, but for tonight's purposes, we're cleared up to 6 because we said so. Um, we're going to check our flaps, make sure they operate in all positions. 1, 2, and 3. And we're good to go. We'll set it back to takeoff. Fellow flight sim pilot, play Star Wars Galaxies, Imperial Pilot Ace, and all that stuff. Excellent, man. Yeah, this is the only gate. Whoops. Flaps zero. Now we got flaps one set. Uh, this is the only uh, this is the gaming gaming I do. And I, I hesitate to call it gaming. There's a, a, a meme in the sim world that we hate calling it gaming uh, in the flight sim world. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is the only gaming I do. On a regular basis. Um, let's see. We got the heading bug set. I'm glad that you take it more serious as a Godsmack. Yeah, I, I try to. Uh, I, I'm not a real world pilot, but I do try to do things realistically. And I, I, there's obviously some liberties that you do have to take. Sometimes I try to point them out um, when that happens, for the most part. Uh, I think we're good. We got flaps set to take off. Trim is, uh, I like the, yeah, I have a little down trim in it. I like that. And we get the taxi light on, and we'll be ready to go. And uh, the only thing I'm going to do before I turn the taxi light on is I want to kind of get a sense. Uh, so if we're going to take off runway 14, I'm not going to do the whole back taxi thing. I think we'll just uh, take 14 from is that Sierra. It's hard to tell. I'll zoom in and, and see. But I think we'll just taxi straight southbound on that taxiway, which I believe is Sierra. And we'll go out 14 at Sierra. That should save us. Yeah, taxiway Sierra. Okay, so we'll just have to go make sure we're going southbound. Uh, once we leave here, we can go ahead and get the taxi light on. And ready to roll, and we're supposed to be airborne by two minutes ago. So I'm uh, not doing too bad, though. Parking brake off. Dylan Hopkins traffic, Moody 514 Delta Victor's taxi out to 14 at Taxiway Sierra for IFR Southeast Bound departure. Dylan Hopkins. And that call you would make. Whether you had t actually talked to an air traffic controller on that sim or not. Uh, so are we headed south? Headed west. So taxiway Sierra. Well, I might be further east than I think I am. You also have to take the taxiway signs with a grain of salt on this sim. As we find a great number of instances where they aren't don't really match up with the diagram per se. So I'm just trying to go south and west. Uh oh. Did I hit a dead end here? Trying to go south and west. Guess this is it. It's got to be it right here. Oops. Yeah, God smack right, exactly. And he says, uh, he says we role play this in our game, and we role play in the uh, Star Wars game too. Exactly. I suppose every simulation community. You know, has the certain level that they take seriously. That's just that's just a meme in the flight sim world, though. If you're yeah, so it's a marked alpha, but I believe this is taxiway Sierra, and uh, so we are. And, and the heading bug is to our left, and we're going to make a 90 degree left to take off. So I think everything is looking good here. Uh, let's go ahead and do our uh, run up real quick. We're going to set the manifold. Uh, well, set the manifold pressure so that the RPM goes up to 2200. We'll flex the prop lever down and back up three times just to get the oil moving back and forth in the governor. Make sure that the prop governor does work. Okay, we'll let it settle back in at 2200. We'll do a mag check, meaning so we're, we currently are operating on a redundant set of mags. We're going to turn 
that switch one to the left, so we're operating on just the left max. We watch a slight dip in the RPMs, about 30 RPMs. That's no, no big deal. We'll switch to just the left set. Yeah, we're still still constant there. Okay, back up to both. So when you operate on uh, the redundant set of mags for safety, but you, before you take off, you want to check and make sure that each individual set of mags is working, and you shouldn't see a significant drop in RPMs when you do that. We are good, guys. Let's go. Probe, recognition, landing lights, and pitot heat. Dylan Hopkins traffic, Moody 514 Delta Victor is now taking runway 14 at Sierra for IFR Southeast bound departure, Dylan Hopkins. More or less straight out, but we didn't really say that, but southeast and straight out from 14, so they'll figure it out. Okay, we're lined up. Tennis and pressure's looking good. We'll go ahead and set our takeoff power. And again, not following the instrument procedure, we're going to just visually maintain terrain clearance. <laughs> Got some saw horses on the runway there. Gear coming up. And uh, as soon as we get through, so the field elevation was like 285, 300. So as soon as we get through seven, we'll start to be 400 above ground level. We'll start a gentle turn on course and point ourselves right toward that Gardner VOR. Pitch for about 85, 90 knots in the climb. We're doing a little bit better than that. That's fine. And though we need to get flaps in. Flaps in, trim up. We can uh, we can reduce from takeoff power to climb power. I like to use 24 and 24. So 2,400 RPMs and 24 on the manifold pressure. This is where you'd switch back to uh, back to center, by the way. Dylan Hopkins traffic, Mooney 514 Delta Victor is now clear of uh, Dylan Hopkins leaving the area to the southeast last call. Dylan Hopkins. Uh, so 24 and 24. And navigating now directly to that uh, Gardner VOR, we're 20.8 miles away, which you guys probably can't see, but I got that DME down to the lower right. And we're lean, we can lean it down, no, no, we're, we're good lean. Increase the manifold pressure, keep it at 24 and 24. And uh, scoot over a little bit to the right. This is where you check in with the center controller. And you'd say, boss to center, or whichever approach controller you were working with. Boston, whoever, Mooney 514 Delta Victor's 2,500 going to 3,000, um, you know, two miles southeast of Dylan Hopkins. And they would go, Mooney 514 Delta Victor, radar contact, climb and maintain 6,000. Okay, we're up to 6,000 now, 514 Delta Victor. And notice they didn't have to say proceed on course for this one because they already cleared you as filed and you're already going to what you filed, so no further needs to be said on that regard. Godsmack is asking about the flight plan. And uh, Al South was kind enough to respond. Let him know, yeah, it's the Wings Over New England training flights available on the Boston Virtual ARTCC from VATSIM. And we're on the Wings IFR number seven, and Al gave you kind of the summary. Uh, we are going to, uh, to Hartford Brainerd, and we're going to be performing the LDA runway two approach when we get there. Smitty has checked in. I think we've said hi to everybody else there. All right, I'm going to keep the uh, keep the manifold pressure up at 24. RPMs are still at 24. Mix is looking good. We got plenty of forward airspeed. I could be climbing a little bit more aggressively. I think VX is about 85. VY is about 100 or thereabouts. I don't. I've got the exact numbers over here, um, but uh, but you can climb more aggressively. You can put in a little bit more pitch up if you want to. But we've got plenty of forward airspeed, and we've got actually pretty pretty good climb performance too. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm basically I'm sacrificing some climb performance for some additional forward speed 
and that is fine because I've got plenty of both to work with. Again, 24 and 24, so we're gonna again gonna bump the. Uh, as you climb, the manifold pressure does slip because the air gets thinner, less dense. So you have to keep adjusting the throttle slightly forward to keep that that climb setting. Again, 24 and 24 is what I use. Let's check in with our navigation plan. Don't need the uh, airport diagram at Keene anymore. But uh, see if I can keep half an eye on the horizon, make sure the wings stay level. So 110.6, and then, and we're, we're direct to it on whatever radio. I mean, I don't know specifically what this radio is. It's just whatever we happen to have wound up on after we turned off the airport. Uh, on the outbound side, though, we have to follow, since we're going to be on a specific charted airway, we have to follow a specific radial in order to be on that airway. So that is going to be a 209 outbound after we pass by Gardner and really should be working ahead of the game here and have Hartford set 114.9 in standby. So we'll do that as well. So again, the next couple steps, 209 on the outbound and then 14.9 in the standby. So we'll do that. I've slipped a little bit to left of course there, so I'm going to correct to the right. I'm going to, uh, oh, I can... Yeah, there we go. I can, I can do that with the yoke now. <laughs> it's so hard to manipulate that heading bug sometimes with the mouse because the plane's bouncing around and all, all of a sudden you start zooming, zooming stuff. All right, let's get ready to level the plane off at 6 here. Uh, the manifold pressure actually slipped to 22, so I'm going to keep it at 22. I'm going to pull the RPM to, whoops, pull the RPM to 22. So there's 22 and 22. Yeah, 2200 RPMs, 22 on the manifold pressure, so that's kind of my accepted uh, cruise power. I'm going to lean it out now to 50 degrees Richard Peak. See, where's the peak? About 1575, so we'll enrich it to 1525. And I got a little bit of right turn in because I could see that I'm slipped a little bit uh, left of course, but now that I'm done managing the engine, I'll pay a little bit more attention to that. Now, since I'm direct to Gardner from wherever I happen to be, I don't have to work back to that radial. I could just recenter and just follow that in from wherever I happen to have wound up. Not, not a, a great representation of proceeding direct, but since I'm not on a specific radio, it is okay to bump that around a little bit. Just make sure that we're going direct to that VOR from wherever we are. Let's put a little bit more down pitch in and get back to that assigned altitude of 6,000. Alright, and we said that the Outbound radial to fly was going to be a 209, so let's go ahead and get the heading bug set to that now. So we're ready to make that turn. It's 200 feet high now. All right, let's get the, let's get let's get pitch down. We're going to eat, keep keep uh, keep adding down trim, and we keep getting blown left of course. You see that? I got to keep correcting to the right. We must have some pretty good wind up here, blowing us to the uh, blowing us to the east. So I'm going to bump that course needle up one more time, but I'm going to keep a little bit of a right correction in here since it appears that we definitely are getting blown left of course multiple times in a row. So just assume that that's got to be some sort of a wind correction. We're only 3.3 .3 miles from that um, VOR anyway, which I know you guys can't see. I think that the Garmin distance is maybe legible there for you. The Bendix box is probably behind my giant head. But uh, 2.4, 2.3 now. And since we are pretty much stable on 6,000 feet and uh, real close to our assigned course, I'm going to go ahead and I uh, know we're about to turn. So we'll go autopilot altitude and then we'll go ahead and hit heading mode which will turn us to that outbound course of 209 now. So now I can flip that up to 209. 
Let's zoom in on that so I can get it set exactly to 209. Guess it's there. And uh, I guess we need to uh, correct to the left. I think we turned a little bit early there. Nope, 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 nope. Maybe not. Maybe not. Twenty-two and twenty-two. We're leaned, so we're correcting now to get back onto that uh, outbound radio of two hundred nine. I can't. It's really hard to tell where that needle is. I guess a two hundred nine is more like there, there. I guess there. So we'll come back a few more degrees to the right. We got PJs with the resub. PJs, thank you very much. Eight month subscriber now PJs thank you so much for that All right, the other thing that we had talked about doing oh by the way okay that radio is slowly working its way back in so we'll rejoin that radio in just a second but the other thing we had talked about doing was getting the Hartford VOR set up in the standby frequency 114.9 or there so we'll go ahead and do that while we're waiting to rejoin that uh, that radial. 114 Niner, let's see, we can s uh, pop that up by one, there we are. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, beautiful day to be flying, won't you be mine? Uh, we are three gallons light in the left side. Let's go ahead and flip that over to the right. We're back onto that radio. Let's go ahead and let auto take care of that for us. As we hit nav mode, we watch the autopilot mode switch. Always when you when you push that button, you want to make sure that the light that that uh, you selected lights up, confirming that you did in, in fact press it, and that press was indeed registered. Okay, so auto now is flying that 209 outbound and we'll talk about the next navigation steps on this leg and then we'll start uh, we'll start uh, getting ready to do that LDA approach into Hartford yeah so maybe it's hoping for Boston to pop on so he can do his uh, his VFR 6 yeah VFR 6 is a fun one um, and we can switch the filter there but uh yeah, we get, uh, Boston's definitely kind of an anomaly tonight. They are typically very, very active, but I just sometimes happen to catch them on these nights when when they're not on. But that's okay. Like I said, you know, we'll, we'll talk through as best as we can the radio calls that we would get from them. Next navigation steps, by the way. We are navigating outbound. So... If there's a straight leg between two VORs, you typically switch over at the halfway point. But what we have here is a bend in the road. How far out is that bend in the road? It's not marked directly, but it's 37 to there and it's 5 to there. So that makes that one what? 42. It's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Who knew that the question, the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything was how many miles from Gardner VOR is the Point Devani? Now we know. We got some gift subs coming out from old school. Thank you so much for that, guys. We appreciate it. Chugley, Northwest, What Now, Smithy Chris, and Carl Anthony, all beneficiaries of old school's generosity. Can't tell you how much we appreciate that. So going out to 42, and we're at 12 now, 12.3, 12.4, so we've got a little ways to go. While we are, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and start looking at the approach. Again, the, uh, the specs for this lesson say that, uh, and that we could, again, we could go here. We could do a teardrop entry and blah, blah, blah. That's all, that's all kind of a little bit more complex, and that's covered in a, in a later IFR lesson. 
Uh, we actually did something like that in an earlier one, but uh, but a little bit of an easier one. But for purposes of this lesson, the IFR-7, they do say they will vector you onto final from Hartford. So we're just going to end up coming down from Hart coming down to Hartford, and then we're just going to kind of head outbound on a more or less southbound heading, and then you know I'll kind of just eyeball it and uh, put myself on a vector to intercept that final approach course, which is the way they would do it. Um, we'll do a full briefing on that in just a moment. Let's first of all get a METAR for the destination airport, which is Hartford Brainerd. And that is a controlled field, if I remember correctly. Let's go to the VFR page. Yeah, that is a class delta. So that is a towered field. We would have a tower controller there that would provide us our landing clearance. Um, let's bring the the pilot back over. Metar K H F D H F D. There we go. Two nine or zero at seven. So we got a pretty good westbound um, westbound wind there. So we're going to do the LDA to two, but we might end up circling to a westbound runway if we've got one. I'll take it at two nine or nine or two, so we'll go ahead and make that adjustment. Uh, Ten statute miles. We do have overcast clouds at fifty five hundred, but by the time we get down to um, do intercept the final approach course, we should have good visibility with the runway. No, no concerns about seeing the runway as we make our approach there. All right, let's see what we've got as far as circling opportunities. Well, we've got a runway. We've got a small runway, a 2,300-foot runway 2-9-er. But I say let's challenge ourselves. Let's go ahead and make our LDA runway 2 circling 2-9-er. Let's see if we can do that. We do have circling minimums, 680 feet, so we'll say 700 feet round figures. And let's see, it uh, doesn't say anything about what you can and can't circle. You want to check these notes up here, see if there's anything specific about what you can and can't circle. There's nothing, so we're good. That'll, that'll be the plan. Uh, in the meantime, let's check on our progress. Uh, spin through the engine gauges. Uh, fuel's looking good. I still want to be in the right selector, 22 and 22. Uh, we're still, I can lean it out a little bit more. We can be about 50 degrees rich peak. Cylinder head temp's looking good. Uh, pressure's all looking good. Everything there is fine. Uh, we're 22 miles now, so we got another 20 miles to travel outbound from Gardner before we need to make a turn. So we are doing well. We got three hours and 38 minutes left in the tanks overall, which is consistent. I think I said I was starting with 412, so we're pretty consistent here with uh, with our expectations. All right, let's fully brief this approach now. 1097 and 002, that's the frequency in the course that will dial in once we are able to, once we're no longer using that NAV1 radio for uh, primary navigation. So we got to hold on to those numbers for now. Can't do anything with them, but we'll, we'll keep, in, keep them in mind. Um, the missed approach frequency in course uh, is up here. It's going to be heading 090 and the Putnam VOR to Rambo. So Putnam 265 um, and Putnam is on 117.4 and we're actually going to be joining a 085 to Putnam. So 117.4 and 085 is actually going to go in the NAV 2 right now. So that we'll be ready to fly that mist if we need it. One, what did I just say? 117.4 and Goldfish Brain strikes again. 117.4, nope. Oh, that's a COM2, duh. I need to be over here. 117.4. Flip that over. And 265, which I said we're going to join it on a 085. So let's just set that there. And again, hopefully we won't need that, but in case we do have to go missed, we know that it is a climbing right turn, so we're going to go... Uh, as a matter of fact, it says climbing right turn immediately. So there's no there's no altitude you have to maintain first. You just go right, bang bang that right right away. 2,500 feet. 
zero nine or zero and then join that zero eight five to put them and then we'll have to flip around once we get there but again hopefully we won't need that uh, so course and frequency yeah yeah frequency and course for the primary approach frequency and course for the mist approach again while we're fumbling through this let's see we've got uh, another 12 miles or so 11 miles Uh, so we talked about the mist approach procedure. Uh, minimums, I said, was 700. 700 whether we're doing straight in or circling, which is fine. Actually, we can dance fix minimums if we are able to uh, able to locate the the uh, dance fix. Now it doesn't look like we're going to have a DME on this. So if we're going to figure out where Dan's is, oh boy. Okay, so in order to figure out where Dan's is, we're actually going to have 114.9 Hartford and the 325 radial tuned in. So we're going to have to make what I just did the standby for, for NAV2. And so we're going to have to tune 114.9 and 325 in here so that we can figure out where that point Dan's is and then know when we're going to cross it because there's no DME there we don't have another way to uh, locate that point so there we go now we have a reference line from this VOR and this reference line to know when we are at Dan's and that's when we can be at 680 feet and then we can descend to 460 feet if we need to. If we couldn't locate Dan's, then 680 was as low as we could go. But since we know when we will be at Dan's, we can be 680 there, and then we got another basically, well, 100 feet if we're going to circle. So we can now call the minimum 600 round figures. And then we're going to circle, we're going to break off, kind of do a right, uh, boom, boom, boom. We'll just do a yeah, kind of a right downwind and uh, or, yeah, left downwind rather to runway two nine. Um, yeah, so DME. Those who were asking is what is the distance measuring equipment? That's how we know how far we are from a uh, tuned nav aid. That's DME is what's giving us that distance from the Gardner VOR, which is behind us. Remember how we just said that we're going out forty two miles from Gardner, thirty seven miles to Darth and then another five miles here to Devani. If we didn't have DME to tell us when we were 42 miles out, we would have to tune this Hartford radial of 053, and then we would just kind of keep going until those radials cross, until both needles, we're looking at both VORs, watching one stay centered and the other come into center, and when they're both centered, then you know you're at that intersection. But because we have the DME, we have a little bit of an easier way to do it. But on that approach, we're not going to have DME because there's, that, that approach is not equipped with a signal for DME. Even though we have the equipment to detect it, it's not there to detect. So on that approach, DME is useless. So instead of having like, oh, we're at 0 0.2 miles, you know, like, oh, 0 0.5 or, yeah, 1.2. So instead of knowing we're at 1.7 miles, you know, based on these distances down here, we would just have to say, all right, well, we know we're at Dan's because we just crossed that radial. And then we're going to know that uh, from Dan's, it's, okay, from from Lomas, it's uh, 5.3 miles, and it's going to be, uh, we'll fly it at 90 knots, so it'll be three and a half minutes. So this is going to be a busy one, guys. And there's 42, by the way, so we need to uh, go ahead and get turned toward the next station. Get turned in toward Hartford on that 053. Flip it into a heading mode. And uh, flip up the 
114.9 and uh, 053 would be 233. 123, okay, we're basically dead on it. Put it back into nav mode. And we're 16 miles and counting down from Hartford. That's so at this point, the controller would have asked you to advise when you have the weather and uh, state approach request for Hartford Brainerd. We would have said, yeah, we got the weather. We're looking for the uh, LDA runway 2 uh, into Hartford, circling to 2 Niner. And so they would say, okay, Roger, you can expect vectors to final, uh, expect vectors to uh, join the LDA to approach at Hartford. All right, and I know I'm missing some of the chat here, guys, but uh, I know you guys are helping to explain what's going on. But uh, yeah, we got a pretty busy. We need to start descending to probably would say. Yeah, we're going to join the uh, join the the final approach course at 2,500. So we'll probably say start descending down to uh, 3,000. Let's just make sure I covered everything in the approach briefing. Missed approach frequency. Yeah, approach frequency and course. Missed approach frequency and course minimums. Uh, forecast winds and crosswind, forecast ceiling, missed approach procedure, and then, oh, if we land on 2-9, we need to kind of plan for our turn off and taxi, which would be a uh, right turn, and then taxi up to the north of the field. So, you know, 2-9 being a pretty short runway, I expect we'll probably roll it to the end, and then taxi back up here through uh, that way, and uh, who knows where, somewhere in there. All right, guys, going to be pretty busy, so... Uh, Pardon me if I'm uh, not too attentive to the chat from here on in, uh, but we are going to go ahead and start our descent. I am going to make it my airplane, have it help us, flight director off as well. Keep 2200 RPMs and we'll uh, pull some power down, plane's going to start uh, slowly falling out of the sky. We'll We're going to uh, we're going to, to to start descending. We're going to say they're going to give us they going to gave us the descent. Descend and maintain three thousand. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. Say we were cleared down to three thousand. And we're still trying to navigate direct into Hartford VOR. And then we're gonna. And there's. We'll say that they said after Hartford VOR, depart Hartford VOR on a, a heading 180. Okay, uh, after Hartford a 180. Five four thousand. We're down to three thousand. Yeah, good weather is bad right now, says Dave. Yeah, I mean, it would be more challenging to fly this when you can't see the ground for sure but uh, we're still going to fly it to the numbers anyway we're going to fly it to uh, to the spec you know, under the assumption that we don't have visual with the airport and again I'm just making minor course corrections to try and keep that needle centered Parking Brake says, what's your favorite GA airplane? I think my favorite is probably the Douglas DC-3. Of course, that didn't start life as a GA airplane, but it is it's a GA airplane now. I'll do my best to uh, I'll do my best to monitor the chat. As uh, at this at this point, I am just a touch busy with with my head buried in the chart here. Again, we're going to the Hartford Hartford VOR, and then we we were told by the pretend controller to depart Hartford, heading uh, basically one eight zero. Vectors for final. <laughs> Chuckley's waxing poetic about my uh, airplane of choice. Of course, we know Chuckley's flown along with us at least once before. 
fairly recently, but I, I feel like Chugly, maybe, man, maybe I'm thinking somebody else. I felt like he flew, flew, flew along with us on one of the earlier legs in that tour, possibly, but uh, I could be mistaken. But yeah, she's a darling, that DC-3. I think I've got the uh, Dave Rendon checked in. I don't know if I said hi. Sorry. Full day for me is here. If I missed anybody else, I do apologize. Okay. Still going down to three, and uh, need to put in a little bit of a correction now to get back onto that. Uh... Yeah, we hopefully won't be making too long a landing because. Uh, the runway we're landing on is like 2,500 feet, 2,300 feet. <laughs> I'm kind of chasing the VOR needle now, but... Uh... Also, 1.6, 1.5, or more or less passing right over the VOR right now. So it doesn't take, doesn't make too much sense to chase that needle too much further. All right, so there we are. 0 0.6, 0 0.5. Are we going to get any lower than 0 0.6, 0 0.5? Okay, yeah, we're half a mile over it right now, so. All right, so let's get the heading bug flipped around to 180. Uh, course is going to be 002. And uh, 109.7 is the... ILS frequency, 109.7. And we were given 3,000, and now they're going to tell us uh, to send and maintain 2,500. All right, 2,500 now, 514 Delta Victor. They would have said it properly. They would have said 2,500. 2,500 is, uh... <laughs> 2,500 is cool guy pilot speak. We're descending to 2,500. Look at Rob Vockery's is checking in. All right, so we're maintaining 180, 2,500. Not, yeah, no, not flight level 025 either, don't worry. <laughs> and I'm still pulling power out, but I'm gradually increasing mix and props. Oops, there's 25. I'll add some power back in, but... Uh, I do want to start slowing this thing down, start getting it into uh, flap retraction range, or yeah, flap, flap uh, deployment range, sorry. Oh, Philip, yep, Philip, thank you very much for that. Now, Timeter was 299 or 2, you are correct. Not that far off, but still that's something that you definitely want to do. Thank you for the reminder. So one eight zero twenty five hundred. Little uh, little 
right of the side heading. Okay, then we get that fixed. There's not a good way in this aircraft to see what DME on, on uh, NAV-2 is. So I'm going to just flip this over back to 114.9. 9.7, 9 9.8, so we're 10 miles south of uh, Hartford VOR now. So we should be good, I think, if we were to be say, if we were to say, okay, uh, you know, turn right heading 330. Main, yeah, maintain 2,500 till established, clear for the LDA, runway to approach. So we'd say, okay, 2,500 till established, heading 330, and clear for the LDA to approach, five before Delta Victor. So there we go. Let's uh, get the heading bug set to 330, since that's what we're assigned. trim there. 2,500. We're into that first notch of flaps. So there's Actually, so the way to know that we're at Lomas is that we're on the 280 from Hartford. So I need to get that 280 set, 114.9. Nine. So what are we on right now? Whoops. What are we on right now, just out of curiosity? We're still on... Uh, Oh, we're still well, well south of it. Okay, so that's fine. We get a ways before we're going to intercept that uh, that point. All right. Well, let's make sure we're, that we're maintaining three three zero, two thousand five hundred, and we'll keep as much speed as we can. We'll keep it up to about hundred knots. Again, I kind of eyeballed the vector. I mean, the, the approach controller would obviously have a better view of where we were and uh, how far out we were and when, when a good time to uh, intercept the final approach course would be. So I might have taken us out just a little bit too far just because I didn't have a radar scope, but I'm kind of guessing. So we might end up uh, just doing a little bit more further intercepts, further out intercept than we normally would. Props and mix are full forward now, so I'm basically just trying to recalibrate for uh, 2,500 feet and about 100 knots. There's 330. It's 100 knots, 2,500. Everything is good. So we're at 2,500. Once we get established, 
We can then descend to 2,200 until that point in Lomas. And again, Lomas is this 280 radial off of the VOR. I'm slipping just a little bit on the altitude. Let's trim it. Nose up just a touch there. Yeah, again, if we want to kind of cheat, we can we can turn this until it centers. Let's see, whoops, see where we are. Plane's bouncing around, making that a little difficult. Okay, so it's a two. I'll just keep it turning it until it centers, and that way we'll keep progress on where we are. Uh, 100 feet low. Let's get back up to 25. So, yeah, if we keep centering that VOR2, we can keep track of where we are. So, just under a 210. Yeah, so that took us kind of far out. Our time and fuel estimate might be a little bit off because I made this a much uh, more extended final than it needed to be. We'll see how it goes. Okay, now that VO, that, uh, Localizer are starting to come in now. And again, hand flying this guy, so do uh, do cut me a little bit of a slack with the chat messages. I'll do my best to keep up with the conversation, but also trying to explain what's going on as I go here, so. All right, we're on localizer now. It's about a zero, zero, 002, I guess. I have to kind of see what happens with wind drifts. Okay, now that we're established on localizer, we can start descending to 2200. Okay, wind, looks like wind drift is pushing us to the right, and we're gonna need to correct here a little bit to the left. So 2200 until we're at that 280 radial. And we're, whoops. See, that's the problem with adjusting these knobs with the mouse is the plane bounces around. It becomes very difficult to stay centered on that click spot there. So we're at like a 230 radial now. I feel like I might have the airport in sight, but I'm going to pretend I don't. <laughs> airport, what airport? I'm going to correct just a little bit to the left here. Stay on that localizer. Get ready to level it off at 2200. Again, we're going to bump the uh, OBS up to the point where it centers. Okay, we're at a two, just under a 240 now. All right, at this point, I think we're well enough established. I'm going to spin this up to 280, and at the point where we see that move, from right to left, as we know, we're at that uh, that point in Lomas. And at Lomas, we are 5.3 miles from the airport. If we get it down to 90 knots, it's three and a half minutes. So we will get ready to start our stopwatch as we cross that 280 radial. At this point, the approach controller sees that we're tracking that localizer inbound, sees that we're complying with the altitude, so they'll probably go ahead and hand us off to tower. Say, Moody 5 and 4 off the Victor, contact, what is this place called? Hartford? Contact Hartford Tower now, 1 2 whatever, whatever, whatever. Alright, Hartford Tower on 1 2 whatever, whatever, 5 and 4 off the Victor. 
we would say Hartford Tower, Mini 5, Port Out to Victor, established on the LDA Runway 2 approach. Hartford, we're going to circle Runway 2 9, or request circle to Runway 2 9. -er. And they would say Mini 5 and Port Out to Victor, circle to 2 9 -er approved. Wind, whatever it was, 2807, what was it? Wind 29007, runway 29 clear to land. Alright, clear to land 29 or 5 before Delta Victor. Okay, and we start our stopwatch here. That that radial has just passed underneath. Take the speed down to 90 knots. We can get the second notch of flaps in. We are now clear to descend to uh the circling minutes. We can go to 700, and if we can locate that point, uh, Dan's, we can go to 600. So again, we're going to set this to 325 now. Aim for 90 knots. Go ahead and get the second notch of flaps in. Go ahead and get the gear in. Add some power to counteract the additional drag. Still correcting back onto that localizer. Localizers are very sensitive, so don't panic about these corrections, guys. These localizers will come right back in if you catch them early enough. Don't uh, don't freak out with the corrections. All right. So since we can identify Davies or Dan's rather, we can go to 600 feet if we need to. Field elevation is pretty much nothing. Alright, that radial, 325 radial is crossing, so we're at dance. We're 1.7 miles away and uh, We can be pretty much kind of want to go to a thousand feet here. Have we seen an airport? Okay, there's the airport. So at this point, we'll go. Uh, hard for traffic. Mooney 5 and Fort Alta Victor's on a mile and a half final runway 2. And we're going to circle now for the uh, left base runway 2 9 at Hartford. Okay, we'll get the third notch of flaps in now. Landing rate predictions if you'd like to, guys. Just a number in the chat, no bot command necessary. Uh, gears down and green. Flaps are set and checked. We'll flip to the left side fuel. Landing clearance has been received. Kind of a short runway. Well, I'll turn it in a little, a little early.
target. We're too close. They're right behind me. Move there. Stay on target. All right, I'm liking it. I'm a little fast. I like to be 75 down final, 70 over the numbers. So I'm a little fast. But I think we're okay here, guys. Seventy-seven. Pretty much right on center line. A little bit slightly long, but not too bad. And I'm overall very happy with that, guys. Very happy with that. Get her off the runway. Of course, this is where you'd contact Grant if there was one, but uh, here, because we're on CTAF, we'll go Hartford Brainer traffic, Moody 5 and Port Alta Victor clear, runway 29 or Hartford. All right, we'll clean it up, stow the flaps, get the uh, strobe lights off, landing lights off, recognition lights off, and Pito Heat can come off. Yeah, Trevely, I think for me, because I wanted to make sure the plane made it down to the ground. He says, that was a really nice, smooth round out. Yeah, I, I think the, the key thing for me was, like, not to overflare, because, you know, as much as uh, much as I wanted to bleed that, that extra speed off, I also, my main concern was getting the wheels in contact with the pavement. So I was like, well, we'll just pull the nose up just barely enough to uh, make sure we touch on the mains first. But other than that, I definitely don't want to overflare this one with that five knots extra speed under me. So it worked out pretty well. And then we said we're gonna kinda taxi uh, northbound pretty much all the way, uh, who knows to where. Looks like we got uh, plenty to choose from here. What is this? Are we gonna, are we gonna cross a road? What is this, is Gibraltar? Where are we? Oh, this is, uh, okay, I see where we are. We turned early. Let's, let's go back to where we just came from. I'm gonna go one more, one more taxiway to the east and then make the left turn. Let me make sure I got everything off of the uh, runway. Stuff, we got the flaps stowed, strobes recognition, landing lights, and pito heat. Yeah, we did, okay, so we're good. Sorry, sorry about that abrupt stop there. trying to look at my checklist and steer the plane at the same time. Okay. Now I think we're good. We'll make the next left. We'll go up past the control tower, and then we'll head up to those hangars there. That's more like it. I'll show you on the airport diagram what I did. Let me make the left turn and get going straight and where I can kind of take my eyes off the road here for a second. Friends don't let friends chart and drive, guys. So I came off here, and I was expecting to make this left, but I made this left here. So now we're going to just park somewhere up in here off to the left-hand side. Does this plane have speed brakes? It looks like they are in the wing, and I swear I watched a streamer use them yesterday. Yeah, the Mooney does. The Mooney does have the Mooney brake here. Um, I try not to use them. I try not to use them unless it's absolutely necessary, but uh, but the Mooney does have them. I try to just—that's my measure of whether I've managed the uh, um, the, the, the speed control on the Mooney properly is whether or not I need those. Best boards in the game, Melvin Leroy. That's right, man. Yep, they are very cool, but I do—I uh, pride myself on trying not to need them. <laughs> Uh, how do we do with the predictions, guys? Oh, uh, the NAV2 was set to 315 rather than 325, says Chugley. Whoops. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Whoopsie. 
Uh, so what did that mean? That mean that that meant that we thought we were at Dan's before we really were. So we were uh, we were safer than we needed to be. The alternative would be to uh, to think you were there later than you really were, which would be you could be potentially into uh, instrument uh, into trouble. I mean, anytime you get it wrong, you're in danger of messing something up. Uh, To, uh, to detriment of injury. But yeah, you are correct. I did miss that by 10 degrees. In our case, in this case, it didn't hurt us. It made us slightly more conservative. But, you know, there are plenty of chances that you can make that error and uh, be, be erring in the other way. So, absolutely good reminder to, uh, to make sure that you're on top of that stuff accurately. Full beans. All right, very good. Uh, so, taxi light now off, parking brake now on. Let's run through the uh, arrival checklist. Transponder can go back to 1200, which we will uh, go ahead and do that, even though we are about to set it back to, uh, about to set it back to 2200 for our next flight anyway, but that's okay. We'll just kind of follow the procedures all the way in. The uh, trim can be reset. And we'll check on our fuel and ETA. I had said uh, 908 on the ground, 913 on the blocks, and indeed it is 932 Eastern time. So we did take ourselves way further out on that final than we needed to. So that added some extra time, but uh, that's okay. We are expecting to have 281 pounds of fuel left in the tanks. And if we check our fuel calculation up here, 281 is what I said. And wow, that's darn close to what we've got. 150, 250, 280. We got like 291. So we got 10 extra pounds. So the fuel calculation turned out okay, even though I was in the air an extra 15 minutes or so. That's not bad. All right. Let me take a quick break out of the cockpit. Let's um, let's run through the predictions. By the way, I know I missed a bunch of the chat. Uh, Ori said eight. Jay Smitty 125. Chugley 165. PJ's 140. 99 from Melvin, 113 Captain Scientist, 86 from Four Day, and I think 86 was the lowest guess other than Ori, who was just like way ridiculously optimistic. Thank you for the confidence, Ori. Uh, but I'm going to say that uh, 86 would have to be the winner. 77, I believe, was the uh, was the actual. So there you go. Four Day would be the big winner if we were doing our giveaway on the landing predictions for round number one here. Very cool. Nice. Uh, Nice flight. I'm not patting myself on the back, but it worked out the way. Uh, like I say, the coach drew it up on the chalkboard, so we'll go ahead and kind of adjust the oscillator back to uh, ground level there. Let's um, let me take a quick break out of the cockpit, guys, and uh, we'll get ready for our next one, which will be wings IFR number eight. Still no air traffic control on in Boston, but again, we'll talk through the radio calls that we uh, we would get as we were commencing IFR. Number eight, I'm going to make a timing adjustment in my planning spreadsheet here. We'll call that a 2150. And then, uh, and we may just knock out the two. I think the third one might be a little too ambitious for us tonight, but we'll uh, leave it on the spreadsheet for now. So we'll hope to get to seven and eight and nine, but we will get ready to do our number eight one here next and might have to call it a night after that. All right, guys, we will be back with you here in just a few, so uh, enjoy the lovely view of Hartford Brainerd Airport here in Connecticut. And watch the lovely traffic go by. Uh, screen's a little tilted. All right, let's reset it. And, whoops. Now let's take it up. There we go, that's a little nicer. Hi, lovely view of Hartford Brainerd Airport here in Connecticut. While the uh, pilot does a little liquid recycling, guys, we'll be back in just a couple.
Alright guys, back with you. Thank you very much for your patience. Liquid has been recycled. Furry co-pilots have visited the little furry co-pilot's room. Are you are you gonna be calm? Are you gonna lay down and be calm? Alright. I'll send you to your mom. <laughs> I'll get back into the pilot seat here. Where what do we got the follow from uh, Juan Francisco while I was out? Thank you, Mr. Juan Francisco, for the follow. We appreciate it. We're doing the Boston Virtual ARTCC's Wings Over New England training flights. And uh, we have just completed Wings IFR number 7. We're rolling on to Wings IFR number 8. Again, if you missed the top of the stream, guys, let's come back to the Boston Virtual ARTCC's website. This is the, the uh, group that handles the Boston airspace on VATSIM. Do I still have the music going? Done with that. Okay. All right. So we uh, we're looking at uh, a series of training flights offered by the Boston Virtual Air TCC, and they're self-study lessons. So you read through the training material, you figure out what procedures you need to follow, what charts you need to read, and uh, what uh, what uh, what uh, SIDs or stars or instrument uh, approaches you need to be able to perform, and uh, the, the lesson material kind of points you in the right direction, kind of talks you through what you need to know, what the charts say, how to how to interpret them, <laughs> and uh, and what to do. So yeah, Rob Valkyrie asks an interesting question, and again we covered this at the top of the stream, but it's worth saying again. In order to do these for credit, and the Boston Virtual ARTCC will keep kind of a scoreboard of who has completed what and there's six VFR flights 24 IFR flights and uh, you get special recognition for completing all 30 uh, each one getting progressively more complex in the procedures that it has you follow um, in order to get credit and in order to know in order to be told whether you've done the flight uh, correctly or incorrectly or uh, or need to repeat in order to get credit for it you would have to do it when Boston ARTCC is online Okay. Right now, they are not. However, having done this series before, uh, I do not need credit for the flights, and I'm reasonably confident, at least, that I'm performing them accurately, although we did uh, point out one little minor mistake I made in the previous one. Fortunately, it didn't turn out to be a material mistake, but uh, a little minor issue with my uh, with my setting of one of the gauges. Uh, fortunately, like I said, didn't have an, uh, a material impact on the performance of the flight. But uh, in order to uh, be told whether you have done the flights properly or, or whether you missed something, whether you, you know, performed the procedure incorrectly, you would have to do it when Boston ARTCC, either Boston Center, uh, is online or in some cases uh, you're, you're flying completely within approaches airspace and you can do it with just Boston Approach online or even one of the other uh, regional approaches depending on where in the airspace you are. This, this series takes you kind of all over the Boston uh, ARTCC's airspace, so there's certain ones that you can fly with just one of the other smaller uh, terminal controllers on. But um, certainly if Boston Center is on, then they cover the whole airspace that the, this series goes in, and you can be relatively assured, unless they are workload impaired, that they can uh, evaluate you for this flight. But yeah, you're correct, Rob Valkyrie, that technically I can't get credit for these right now. However, um, I've done this series before and gotten credit for it before. There's only about six flights later on in the IFR series that they've added since I've done it. Um, and when we get to those, up into the, I think it's 20, 20, uh, no, uh, 8, uh, shoot. I don't remember. 18 through 22, maybe. I can't remember. Um, but when we get higher into the IFR series, I will need to make sure that, that uh, Boston is online and, and can give me credit for those. Because there will be those six that I need to do and get credit for. But these I'm just going to kind of talk through and uh, do my best to give you a sense of what radio calls you would make and what you would expect to hear from the controllers during the performance of these flights. We're going to move on now and do you, uh, Al says, do you have to do them in order? No, you don't have to do them in, in order. Uh, I feel like it, 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 it makes more sense to do in order because uh, as I mentioned before, at the top of the show, I mentioned that uh, each one that you get into kind of builds on skills and procedures that you have learned earlier in the program. So if you're skipping around a lot, you might get into something that they must, they're assuming at this point you know was covered in an earlier lesson, but now it's like you have to go back and find that lesson to figure out how to do that part of it correctly. So it, it is beneficial to you to go through in sequence for sure, but you don't have to. 
Uh, I'm going through them in sequence. I could just go to the ones that I'm missing and knock, the, knock, knock just those out, but I'm doing these more of a demonstration for others who are interested in, uh, in, in doing this series so, that, uh, so we can have a full and sequential kind of record of, uh, of a demo flight for each of them. So, uh, so less for my own benefit and more for the benefit of others. We are going on into uh, IFR number... Which one did we just do? We just did seven, and we're doing eight now. So again, Hartford to Laconia, HFD to LCI. Uh, this is going to be another full ILS approach without a procedure turn or a course reversal. Uh, so this is not a whole lot of new information, but uh, kind of a review. And the one thing that is interesting about this um, particular... Yeah, cleared ILS approach. Since there's only one ILS, they uh, don't have to specify the runway number. So that's that's kind of a little bit of a new thing, a little slight variation there. Um, but this goes through, you know, kind of the different categories. We're in, in the Mooney. Our final approach speed is about 75 to 80, so we're at category A. Um, but uh, here's the different categories you wanted to know. This is category E is pretty much military only. Uh, most of your airliners are category D. Um, so, so anyway, some new information as you go through each one, and uh, we'll, we'll talk through this more in, uh, in detail. Let's actually look at the, let's look at the route. Let's blank this out. And again, the, uh, the lesson material tells you what route to file, but it's also the route that is in the preferred route database for uh, this city pair, Hartford to Laconia. So we'll punch that in, we'll take a look at it. Uh, so we're going back kind of the way we came almost, really south and east to Hartford BOR, and then back up Devani, and then back kind of up to Gardner. But then this time from Gardner, we're going to continue north and east to this uh, Concord VOR, and then north and east for um, Concord is our destination of Laconia Municipal. And again, Hartford Brainerd here, where we are now, is towered. Laconia is non-towered. So again, we would be handed from the uh, from the center controller to, uh, to Unicom, essentially, once we've gotten our approach clearance to uh, announce our position as we make our arrival into Laconia. Let's get the so we don't need the LDA-2. We've already got the, here's the airport diagram for where we are now, so we'll keep that. Let's, uh... Yeah, there's no departure procedure necessarily to follow. So really, it's just going to be ALCI. And we're going to file, if we fly, this uh, ILS or localizer to runway 8. Oops. There we go. So this is what we're going to fly. And we're off of the Concord VOR. We have this feeder leg. And we're basically going to be cleared from the approach right from Concord. Cross Concord, at or above, whatever. Probably 5,000, maybe. Cleared for the uh, ILS approach. Again, we, they don't have to say runway 8, but they normally do. Clear for the ILS approach runway 8, Laconia. And so then we can follow this in. And again, it's got different minimums if you are able to... That's a weird name for urine or urine. Are we able to locate urine? Yeah, we just we just saw some. Um, and again, in this case, how do we locate urine? Aside from the obvious, uh, is 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 with DME. So our aircraft is DME equipped. So in this case, you know that we have a real easy way to locate that point, which is uh, five point five DME uh, on this localizer. So again, we'll we'll call, talk through the. Uh, Talk through the approach in a little bit more detail as we as we kind of brief the whole thing, but there it is. Be ready to uh, to go, and we'll just head back up to the top of the checklist. And Chugley says, "What's the cruise speed of the Mooney? Cruise speed is uh, about 180 uh, true airspeed, maybe even a little bit better than that." But uh, the the um, the categories, by the way, are determined not by your cruise speed, but by your uh, your VREF final approach speed. Actually, VREF would be your speed over the numbers. 
approach speed is a few knots higher, but it, it's based on your VRF speed. Approach reference speed, I guess to say it properly. All right, back up to the top of the checklist we go. Let's go ahead and get back down into the airplane. Whoosh. And uh, go ahead and send our flight plan. So that means we got to bring B-Pilot over here, and we'll check for an updated METAR as well while we're here. But let's go ahead and get the flight plan open. We're going to be K... HFD to K, where are we going? LCI. Uh, no alternate, although this lesson actually does talk through the process of selecting and fuel planning for an alternate, so definitely not a bad idea to, uh, to, to, to have a sense of what fuel planning for an alternate is. Again, if you go through my, um, my playlist, my YouTube tutorials playlist over there on the left-hand side of your lower left-hand side of your screen, there's a playlist called That's in Tutorials. One of them is about fuel planning and flight time estimates and uh, does kind of go through how to fuel plan for an alternate. Um, the, the main rule about whether if you're in the real world, in the U.S. at least, and you are IFR and your, your, weather, your weather at your destination is not favorable, uh, it becomes required to file an alternate based on what was known as the 3-2-1 rule. And that is, uh, within one hour, either way, of your estimated arrival, if the minimums are going to be below uh, 2,000 feet AGL, uh, the cloud cover is going to, yeah, ceiling is going to be below 2,000 feet AGL, and visibil or visibility is going to be below 3 miles, then you must file and plan fuel for an alternate. Um, in this case, that's not the case. We'll just leave it blank. But again, that lesson goes through a little bit of uh, of uh, discussion about how to choose a good alternate, and you, obviously you want to choose an alternate with a nice, easy to follow instrument approach in case the weather is bad and you need something with nice low minimums to get the plane safely onto the ground. Anyway, so we're going to leave that blank for now. Departure time. We're going to call. Uh, what do we say? 13 minutes from now, 0205. I think we can do that. Time and route for this one. We're going to call it. Uh, oh, 58. 58, I said. And a few remaining, 331. Cruise speed 180. This is going to be, we're going to call that one 9,000 feet. The route for this one, this is the Wings IFR 8. Fix that while we're there. Route for this one is uh, basically back the way we came. Hartford, Victor 229. 229, I said. GDM. And then, like we said, Victor 39 up to Concord, 39 up to Concord, Concord, and we're slant alpha, meaning no, uh, no, uh, yeah, RNAV capability, and we got the Wings IFR 8 in there, and of course the stream, uh, stream link in there as well. Okay, that's filed. Get into my planning spreadsheet and adjust the timing to match what I just filed. And I think we talked through the basics of the flight, so I will kind of just roll on checklist for now. Oh, and I did say while we were over here, we should check the METAR again. It may be the same. Where are we? Okay, uh, HFD. So it has, you can see, so the first thing that it says is the time. 10.23, I'm sorry, yeah, 10, it's the 10th, and 2353 Zulu. It's now the 11th, and 0053 Zulu. So it's it's the next latest observation. So the wind has gotten to 60, so it's changed by 30 degrees, but it's also now only 3 knots. So I think we can probably just take off on whatever runway is most convenient to us at this point. 2994 is now the altimeter setting, which I think we've already kind of adjusted it up a little bit. Yeah. So even at 299 or 7, it's reading, you know, zero feet. So we'll just leave it there. That's fine. Somebody's spawning next to us. Somebody certainly pulled up next to us. And is that AI ground traffic or is that somebody on VATSIM? Who knows? Could have a little group flight thing going. That's all right. Always welcome. We set the flight plan, we checked the METAR, we set the altimeter, we verified the field elevation, the radio is already on 122.8, which again, we'll kind of just make one more check and make sure that there's no air traffic control on. Okay, so we'll 
say that we've obtained our clearance, we'll set our squawk code, which if we're IFR and non-staffed airspace, it's just a VAT simism, not a real world code there, but 2200, is, at least in the U.S., is what you usually squawk if you're IFR, but there's nobody to give you a squawk code. 2200 is good enough. Altitude mode is on. Nav and ADF tuners set. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves what we're navigating to first here. Let's go ahead to the world load chart since that's what we're going to be mostly working off of. And we do have some freezing warnings up here as we get uh, further north, so we'll have to be careful about that. Uh, so hard for Brainerd, and uh, I think we're what we're going to do, instead of navigating directly to Hartford, seven miles south and east, and then out, is we'll probably just tune 114.9 and 053, and we'll just kind of vector ourselves eastboundish, and then we'll just join that. You know, we'll just intercept it as it comes in. So that'll save us a couple miles there. 114.9 and 053, though, are the uh, key figures. And then the next VOR up the line would be that uh, Gardner one that we were on before. 114.9 and 110.6. So we'll get that uh, set to go. 114.9 is already in the, in the standby because we were just using it. And then 110.6 is Gardner. And then the course to follow, like we were just saying, of 053 outbound. And uh, again, our distance to Devani is 17, right there where the crosshair is, is 17 miles to that first point of uh, Devani. So, 053 again is the radial setting outbound, and we'll spin that around to 51, 2, and 3 there. It's not centered right now, we know, we know that, that's fine. But uh, that's not a big deal. We'll worry about that once we get airborne. Airport diagram, we had said the the METAR was now two six zero. So I think instead of going all the way back down to runway two niner, I think uh, because it's now it's a and good. Coming in from that direction, but I think taking off runway two zero is fine. It's only three knots anyway, and then we can uh, make a left crosswind, and then join that uh, that radial that heads up that way. Ah, there we go. Work of art. We're parked somewhere up in here, so we'll taxi to the north, and then we'll take off in the two zero direction, and the runway heading there is. What does that say? 202? Zoom in. Yeah, 202 and a half, so 203, really. Mr. Good Fixins is here. And, uh, yeah, we're getting our wings, but we're kind of cheating. We're, we're doing it without air traffic control um, from, from Boston, so we're just kind of talking through what we would say and uh, do. So there's, there's the runway heading. And we'll need to make sure that when we depart, when we taxi out, we're taxiing in the opposite of that. Uh, heading bug direction. Doing the wings IFRs yet, Leah Rose, and uh, no, uh, not not heading up to Burlington today. I think that they do have a stop in Burlington later on in the series, uh, but we're on wings IFR number eight right now. We're going from Hartford to where are we? Chris one two three BVA for life. Well, tell somebody to get on center then, man. We're going Hartford to Laconia here as part of the Wings IFR-8. Alright, we said we're going to be off five minutes from now. Alright, well, we may. Heading bug, initial altitude. So we had said, uh, we had said 9,000 is what we'd filed. And, you know, we might get an initial altitude out of this airport. I don't know what it would be. But uh, we'll just set that to 9,000 for now. We'll just assume that we're going to be cleared straight up to that as soon as we get in touch with uh, as soon as we get in touch with air traffic control. I pretend air traffic control for tonight. I pretend pretend air traffic control for tonight. Uh, the flaps we know are operable, but we'll go ahead and get them set into takeoff position trim. I'd like to have a little bit of a down trim set there. 
and uh, we'll go ahead and get our taxi light on. We know that we are taxiing to the north, so that's going to kind of be over our right shoulder. And it looks like we got maybe a couple friends flying along with us. All right, taxi lights are on. Parking brake is off. Hard for traffic, Moody 514 Delta Victor Taxi now to runway 204 IFR eastbound departure. Hard for. Forgot where I was. And away we go. And Chris says, your best bet's to do the wings when Jay is on. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's fun to do it when you can kind of review it from his side of the scope. You can watch his stream back and, and see what it looked like from his vantage point. So that's definitely cool to do. But I tell you what, there's really not a bad Boston controller that I've ever encountered. All right, so we're, we're departing on 2-0, so that we've got the heading bug set to 2-0, and that is indeed the position behind us. It's showing at our 6 o'clock, so that's kind of a little bit of a sanity check to make sure that we are taxiing in the right direction for our departure from runway 2-0. Oh, Chris is uh, saying Jay because he's on for 10 hours straight. Yeah, well. <laughs> That's true, but he usually starts at like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, so that doesn't really help us any more than it would any other person coming on at like 6 or 7. All right, getting up to the top end of the airport, we're going to kind of cut over to the east. Is that the uh, hole short there? Yeah, I can't tell if that's the de facto hole short or the IFR I, yeah, ILS hold short, but either way, we'll we'll just call it right there. Hartford Brain or traffic Moody five one four Delta Victor is departing runway two zero. IFR northeast bound left crosswind on way two zero Hartford for Brainerd. Strobes on, landing lights on, recognition lights on, pito heat on. Making a 90 degree right to runway heading. Okay, that's confirmed. Heading bug is uh, in agreement. Temps and pressure's all looking good. Engine seems to be responding normally. We'll go ahead and set our takeoff power. Okay, we're gonna go left crosswind and then we'll just intercept that radial. Airspeed is alive, we're 60 knots. All right, 80 knots, we'll rotate it. Bring the gear up, raise the, yeah, there we go. Gear up, get up to about 400 feet, pull the flaps in, start our turn on course. All right, for Brainerd, 514 Delta Victor's clear, runway 20, turning Left crosswind, IFR eastbound, leaving the area to the east. Last call, Hartford Brainerd. Hartford Brainerd, traffic one, Charlie Victor, take two zero, take off for eastbound, IFR as well. All right. And we're going to pull the uh, pull 
power down 24 and 24 is the uh, settings that I use. I'm just turning 90 degrees left, so I'm just basically turning until that heading bug is right off that 3 o'clock position there. 24 on the RPMs and 24 on the manifold pressure. And how we're doing on the uh, leaning? Yeah, we're good. Right in that blue arc. So we're eastbound now, eastbound and down. Check in with the center controller. Well, we, we would have gotten takeoff clearance, right? You know, runway 20 clear for takeoff. You know, on departure fly heading, you know, 100, whatever it was, 110. Um, so now we're checking in with departure. Yeah, departure, Moody 5 and 4 Delta Victors, 2000, I'm sorry, 1800 going up to our, uh, whatever our initial assigned was. And they say, okay, Moody 5 and 4 Delta Victor, radar contact, climb maintain 900,000. Okay, up to 900,000, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. And they'd also say, uh, 5 and 4 Delta Victor, intercept Victor 229er, and proceed on course. I will right, we'll intercept 229er, proceed on course, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. So that way we now know that once that Radial starts to come in, we've been cleared to join it, and then just kind of resume our filed route from there. Controller Bowen is here. And again, I could be climbing more aggressively here, but uh, I feel like I'm good with the climb performance, so we're sacrificing a bit of the climb performance to get a little bit better forward speed, and, uh, and that is fine. Now the manifold pressure has slipped to 23, so I'm going to bump the uh, engine back up to 24. Manifold pressure will will uh, naturally decay as you climb, as the air gets less dense, but slowly but surely adjust that throttle forward and maintain that, uh, that climb power again. I, for my purposes, climb power is 2400 RPMs and 24 on the manifold pressure. Hand flying so far. We're through 3,000. We're going up to 9. And we're going to join that Victor 229 airway, which you'll see that yellow HSI at the bottom of your screen start to start to center in. Oh, there it goes. Speak of the devil. And centering in pretty quickly because we're only 4.5 miles from that VOR. So once it started to move, it started to move. Looking almost like a localizer needle as fast as it moved. So we overshot it a little bit, but we're back on it here. There we go. And again, let's remind ourselves we're only following that out, that 229, I'm sorry, that zero, whatever it is, five, the 053, 17 miles. 053 radial, 17 miles out. And then we're at that point, Devani, and then we're going to join the next. The next leg from there. Gonna put a little up trim in it. I'm going to try and catch a little bit better of a. Uh, A little bit better of a climb rate if I can. Yeah, I am seeing some grace that's struggling. Yeah, I do have real world weather set right now. Uh, there are some patches of precipitation around according to Sky Vector, but it doesn't look too bad overall. Mostly green dots, meaning uh, you know fairly VMC throughout. But there's a couple little patches of precip around here. And I, and I am running real-world weather at the moment, even though I'm running daylight, so I'm not running real-time, real but I am running real, real weather. Just putting in a little bit of a left correction here to keep that VOR needle centered. We're outbound on a 053. Chuckley's got daylight going as well. around just a little bit too. Bumpy bumpy. 
No, you're in the vision jet. <laughs> well, I will duck as you push over me. <laughs> you're going to do the flight with, uh, you're going to do the entire flight at flaps one so you can stay behind me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. They're tiny, tiny jets. But, uh... I could probably be right on my six in a... in short order. <laughs> so, it's a good thing. I'm sacrificing a bit of climb rate to get, uh... a little better forward speed. Okay, 12.8, 12.9, 13 miles now. I'm going to be ready. So what's the next turn? The next turn is we're going to be inbound to Gardner on a 209, which is going to be a 029 as we are inbound to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the heading bug set to 029 just to be ready. Again, I put some hardware controls in for that, so that's making that a little bit easier, especially since we're a little bit bumpy today. And we're going to try and keep the, uh, keep the climb going here. Going up to 9, although the outside air temp's negative 4. No moisture to speak of. But remember, the Mooney does not have any, any anti-icing capability, so... I think what we would probably end up doing if we encounter any moisture, it does look like there's a few little wispy clouds down there. So we'll have to be careful. We know that Microsoft Flight Sim 2020's icing modeling is very, very aggressive. But we will hope to avoid uh, any issues. Chuckley's taking it easy on me. Okay, yeah. Well, you've got... Um, You've got me on the forward speed, though. I think, what am I indicating right now? 130 to 140, so. All right, there's 17 miles. We're gonna go ahead and make that left turn now. And if we flip over the BOR to Gardner, 110.6, we need to set that 029 radial. Should be pretty close. I didn't, didn't miss it by much, but let's keep the wings level here and see if I can get it dialed in exactly on a 029. Uh, I guess it's there-ish. That's fine. That's going to have to be good enough. Okay, so we'll correct a little bit to the right. Four and I'm I've been I've been a bad boy. I'm not letting the uh, I'm not keeping the manifold pressure up. Manifold pressure had slipped all the way to 20. I've now got it back up to 23, but at this altitude, 23 is the best I'm going to get. RPMs though are steady, holding steady at 2400, so we're okay there. It's just like if I had been managing the engine a little bit better, we could have been getting a little bit better of a climb there. Got a vision jet on our six. I think he's got missile lock on us. Right, there we go. Speed's coming up now. All right, we gotta watch out. We do have some some little cloud layers here. Temp seven below zero. Master arm with good tone. Brakes, you'll fly right by. Fortunately, I've got them. <laughs> 
What happens if your manifold pressure is too low? Well, it just means, Bowen, that I'm not, uh, I'm not running the engine at high, as high a power as I could be. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I'm climbing slower than I could be, or I'm, I'm climbing at a slower forward airspeed than I could be. I mean, if you let that take to it, take, take it to it, it's absurd uh, conclusion. Then it means that uh, you know you'll lose airspeed and where you won't be able to sustain your climb. But it just means that uh, you could put you know you could put the the pedal down a little bit more if you want to. That's basically what it means. All right, so level it out, level it out at nine thousand, and uh, I can pull the. Uh, RPM's back to 22 now, 22 and 22. Of course, the manifold pressure is at 22 wide open, so we're already good there. Get the, uh, get the RPMs down to 22, and then we'll get the mix leaned out to 50 degrees rich of peak. Keep leaning it, keep leaning it, keep leaning it, keep leaning it. You see the, R, the EGT is going up 1500, 1550, 1580. And that's about, yeah, okay, that's about as high as it's going to go. So I'll take it back down to about 1530. There we go, close enough. Yeah, close enough. And still trying to uh, stabilize myself on that 9,000 feet. Yeah, GMAX's de-icing should be mandatory in all planes. It's the only negative for the Mooney. Well, I believe, and I, I mean, I presume, obviously, you know, you can, as an aircraft owner, you can outfit your plane with whatever systems you want to outfit them with, with, with enough money, right? Um, but I believe that it is pretty standard for real-world Moonies not to come with anti-icing stuff. Anti-icing and de-icing stuff. I believe that that is the case. I'm not a real-world pilot, and I uh, don't know anybody who owns a Mooney, but... Agent Bravo 7 wants to go Lena Peak all the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm going by what's in the... Uh, Go by what's in the, the POH that it comes with, which I know. I know, I know. I just got just going by the numbers that uh, that it, that it comes that it, uh, comes designed for. But you're correct. I mean, Agent Bravo Seven is basically saying you can get um, better fuel economy and and similar cooling effects by going lean of peak rather than rich of peak. And uh, I've gotten to the point now, Agent Bravo 7, that when I fly the Baron with the Reality Expansion Pack, uh, I go ahead and do that. I haven't flown that Baron in a long, long time, though. I've recently decided, by the way, recently decided that I'm going to go back to that star and uh, and get that those P3 and P4 ratings. P3 is the is the equivalent of the commercial multi-engine. So I've got to dust off that Baron and uh, really study up on engine out procedures. So that's the one thing. Like I've been sitting for a long, long time, and I think there was a sense when I rejoined the Vatstar Discord, like. Oh, yeah, you should be able to knock out the P3 in like, you know, 10 minutes. You know, just whip through the exam and book a check ride and be done. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's not going to be that easy for me because I've spent pretty much all of my simming career flying invincible airplanes that don't fail. So I really have not spent a lot of time studying up on engine out procedures because my engines don't fail. And since that is a big part of what they cover in that check ride, you know, I do feel like I need to study and practice for that. That is not going to be a cakewalk for me. 
I mean, the the uh, instrument part, the ha being able to hand fly instrument procedures. I think that's going to be that's going to be a cakewalk. But certainly, all the engine out stuff, emergency procedures, memory items, you know, that kind of stuff, being able to determine what which engine out procedure you follow based on what, what, at what stage of your flight it happens. You know, that's all stuff I'm going to need to really brush up on and practice. So I don't think it'll come as easy to me as people are assuming. Now, because she's not turbocharged, it doesn't come with any real dangers. I, I got you. Nat, nat, NA meaning naturally aspirated. Yeah, I got you. I, did, I missed that earlier, but I, I'm, I'm with you now. But um, but yeah, no, I just go by what's in the uh, what's in the handbook. But uh, but you're correct, and the sim coders, um, REP goes into great detail about uh, alternate leaning techniques. That uh, that encourage the use of lean of peak, you know, more more fuel like more fuel economy with uh, same cooling performance. All kinds of fun stuff you guys can read about if you'd like to. And we'll probably discuss at length once we fly that Baron for you again. Probably next month, like I said, after I've had a chance to dust her off. Of course, knowing the reality expansion pack, since I've had it dormant for eight months, it probably needs a oil change and a new battery and, a <laughs> and you know, all new fluids and drain, you know, flush and fill the uh, flush and fill the gas tanks and yeah, who knows what it needs. <laughs> New tires, new brakes. Probably needs the works. <laughs> Chugley says, if the engine goes quiet, it's a little too lean. Leading checklist complete. Yeah, exactly. I think they call that 50 degrees rich of dead. <laughs> or rich of peak, the, 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 peak, the bottom peak. 50 degrees rich of valley. <laughs> Smitty's flying the uh, the REP for the 172 currently. He says, "Yeah, no, uh, no joke. Those sim coders guys know their stuff. Excellent pilots and excellent coders, and their software is uh, lots of fun. We've been hand flying this whole way." Oh. Alan had a question about the Telex. Um, so I think if you're if I'm looking if you're looking at what I'm looking at here, no, okay, because that's that's simply just a, a timer. Uh, I don't see it, Alan. You're going to need to help me. What's it left of? What's it right of? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just the, uh... Yeah, that's just the microphone. It doesn't do anything in the sim. I wasn't left enough. Speaking of which, I need to be a little bit more left to be on this radial, huh? 7.6 miles from it, and I uh, need to kind of know what I'm doing after Gardner VOR, don't I? I'm not really doing a good job to stand a step ahead of the aircraft. 110.6, and now we're going to go 042 outbound, is what it says, under the magenta line there. 042, so I will uh, we'll set that. There's 042, we'll get ready to set that as we pass over Gardner. Next VOR up the line is Concord on 112.9, so I'll have 112.9 dialed in and ready to swap. And, uh,
Yeah, did you like that little uh, narration segue, Bowen? You set me up perfectly for that, my dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> down to 9,000 and as soon as we get north and east of Gardner on that 043 or whatever it was heading up toward Concord I am going to hand the controls over to Otto here for just a second so I can start briefing the arrival okay so let's autopilot altitude and heading mode so he's going to turn us down to 9,000. He's going to turn us to that 043, and I will set the radial to the 043. I guess that's 40, 41, 42, 43. Maybe we'll come one to the right there. We'll see how we settle into it as we have passed it. Again, 22 and 22, 50 degrees rich peak. Looks like we can switch over to the right-hand fuel tank, so we'll do that. Cooper Ranch traffic, Sierra Swarm, forward to Clubbit, departing runway 16, right downwind departure to the northeast, Cooper Ranch. Okay, so it looks like we need to put in a bit of a left direction to get onto that radial, so we'll... We'll do that. We'll let auto join it. How far out are we going on it? It's a 46 mile leg from Gardner to Concord, so at 23 is when we will switch from outbound Gardner to inbound Concord. <laughs> All right, and as that radio comes back in toward the center, we'll click it into nav mode and we'll let auto get us joined and locked in while we finish. Red Bull number one. Crack open Red Bull number two. And go ahead and pop nav mode on and now it's going to automatically track that outbound radial. As soon as it feels it's joined it, we'll see it make a right turn. And then we should start thinking about our arrival into Laconia. We don't need Hartford Brainerd airport diagram. We don't have an airport diagram at, uh, at Laconia. We've got only the runways 8 and 26. And we've got only the ILS to 8. So let's start talking through what we've got here. And we're a little, a little bit high. Let's see if we can uh, put in a slight autopilot managed descent. While we're doing that, we can get a METAR. Actually, let's do this in such a way where we can see the oscillator. There we go. METAR KLCI. 240 at 4. So we do want to land on the westbound runway. Overcast at 75, so that's going to be, we're going to be below the cloud layer as we come in. No big deal there. 2988 is the altimeter. We'll go ahead and get that set here in just a moment as we lock back into altitude mode here. After the 9,000, we should be good. Okay. Alright, so. 108.5 and 084, that is the uh, 
So one twelve nine. So that is going to be the next step after Concord. So we can't tune this yet, but we'll have it in the standby as soon as we switch over into uh, navigating inbound to Concord. We'll put this in the standby. One zero eight five zero eight four. Uh, the missed approach, 1150 straight ahead, and then a left to 5000 off of the, is that ENE? Is that Kennebunk? Are we far enough east to be receiving Kennebunk? Maybe. 117.1. And uh, the, what's the outbound? 300. So we'll get that tuned in now. 117.1 and 300. So we'll be ready to fly the mist if we need it. 117.1. Make sure it's captured at 9,000. Okay, it's coming back to it. 117.1 and 300 in case we need to fly that mist. The minimums for circling, since we're not going to be doing the straight in, we're going to kind of do a uh, circling approach. And we, we can identify Yurun because we do have DME, and so we'll know we're at Yurun when we're at 5.5 miles DME. Now we're going to finish this one up, and I think probably call it a night. I'd hope to do 7, 8, and 9, but I think it's going to just be 7 and 8 tonight. Um, so the minimums, because we can identify your rune, we do have DME on this aircraft, so we can identify your rune. So given that, our circling minimums are 1160, means sea level. We'll just say 1200 round figures, which just makes it a little easier to remember. 1200. And uh, the one thing we need to know, circling not allowed south of runway 8 to 26. So if we're going to circle to land here, we're going to follow this, this instrument approach in toward runway 8, uh, but we're going to break off and circle to land on 2-6. That means we can't do, go south. That means we're going to have to do a right downwind. We're going to have to break off to the left and then join a right downwind to runway 2-6. Because we're not allowed to be down here. Presumably for obstacle clearance or possibly noise abatement, but I mean you see some of these obstacles here, it kind of tells you why. What else do we need to know? So straight to 1150, then 5000, heading 264, and uh, join this 300 radial off of uh, 117 once. We've got that dialed in. All right, what else do we need to know? Approach frequency and course. We got missed approach frequency and course. We got the minimums, 1200. Uh, winds we know are coming from 240 at 4, so that's going to be a slight left to right on 26. Very slight left to right. The ceiling we talked about is going to be at, what, 7500, so it shouldn't be a factor. Uh, we did discuss the missed approach procedure and then the turnoff route. If we are successful at getting down on runway 26, it will be a right hand turnoff that appears. I'm not sure exactly which parking area we'll use, but uh, we'll just say we'll use one of these parking areas here near the control tower. So that's coming in on runway 26. It's a right-hand turnoff. Okay, so I think we're as briefed as we're going to get here. And at what point we were supposed to switch over at 23 miles so that we were inbound to Concord. So let's, we're a little bit late doing that, but let's go ahead and get that done. We're just going to pop the plane into heading mode. That way it'll keep on going straight while we fiddle with the radios. We're going to switch over to where we are inbound to Concord. So we'll switch that. 112 Niner. And we'll bring the map over here. We're inbound to Concord on a 223, which is, uh, if we subtract 180, that's a 043. So we'll get uh, 043 set, which I think is already, well, let's see. Uh, it's hard to tell. Is that is that four zero maybe? One, two, three clicks. Okay, so we do need to steer 
a few degrees to the left in order to rejoin that. Let's check it again. Is that 40? One, two, three. Okay. So we'll steer a little bit to the left and let auto rejoin that 043 inbound. 17.5, 17.4. So we made that switch a little late. We're supposed to make that switch halfway. But we're good. We're, uh, we're inbound to Concord now. Um, let's then go ahead and tune that ILS frequency so we have it in the standby, 1085. So we're ready to go on our next step. 8, 5. I don't want to switch it yet, but I want to have it there. And then let's figure out altitudes. We would say uh, descend to cross Concord at uh, 5,000, clear for the ILS uh, runway 8 approach at Laconia. All right, so if we're going to cross at 5,000, we're, we're starting at 9,000. We've got 4,000 feet to lose. I like to use 3.5 miles for every 1,000 feet, so we'll multiply that by 4. We want to start that turn 14, or I'll start the descent rather, 14 miles prior to. Uh, and there's 14 miles, okay. As if on cue. I'm going to keep the RPMs around 2200. I'm going to start pulling power out. And we'll just do, we'll start with an autopilot managed descent. Just got to make sure that I get enough of a descent in. Probably want to get it down to about 1,000 feet per minute. So you like to go, to keep a three degree um, descent rate, you like to go your ground speed times five. So I mean, 900 feet per minute is pretty good here. You know, maybe, maybe 800 because that, that's kind of more of a three miles per thousand. And, uh, ooh, and I never did join nav mode there. So we'll get nav mode engaged, and we'll make sure we're navigating direct to that VOR. So I did miss the uh, miss the radio by a little tiny bit, but we're okay there. Get that fixed. And we'll say 5,000 to Concord, and then uh, clear for the approach after that. Smitty says there's four of us going to Laconia. Nice. A little, uh, little slant alpha group flight going for you. Al says, I'm going to need eight months of everyday practice three times a day before I'm ready to execute that approach and talk to the controllers at the same time. There's not a whole lot you have to say to the controllers. That's a good thing. Seven miles, we should be about 2,000 above, and we're 2,300 above, so I do need to expedite this descent a little bit here. Uh, again, so I, I, I use three and a half per thousand, so at seven miles I should be two thousand above target, and I was a little about three hundred feet high. So we'll expedite the descent just a touch. Again, continuing to pull the power out. Bombs away. Yeah, we're in the Carinado Mooney ovation. So only the one engine, only half as many engines as a Seminole. We're in a semi. We're in a semi null. We're we're, we're in half a null. I, I belabored that joke way more than I needed to. <laughs> I am also going to uh, take matters into my own hands here. Uh, whether or not it's uh, advisable. Let's see what we can yeah, keep it lean a little bit here. 
the oft forgotten Seminole. That's right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take matters in my own hands here. Okay, so three and a half miles to go, and we're 1,000 above target. Okay, so we're back on descent profile. Perfect. So I'm going to shallow that out just a touch now. All right, so cross Concord at or above 5,000 clear for the ILS runway 8 approach Laconia. Don't hit me on your way down, says good fixes. All right, my airplane guys, bear with me on the chat messages. Catch up with the uh, catch up with the chatter as we uh, as we get on the ground at Laconia, hopefully safely. And after Concord, it's uh, at three five three for seventeen, almost seventeen miles. So given that, I'm going to go ahead and set heading bug to 353, so we'll be ready to make that turn. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Hopefully that's about right. Okay, and we're at 5,000 now, so we'll level it out. Add some power back in. Add some more power back in. I feel like I've kind of missed, yeah, we're more or less over top of the VOR now, so that's fine. We'll go ahead and turn to that 353. We can go 17, 17 miles, 16.9 miles. Take it down to 4,200. Hitting the brakes, says Charlie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be chopping it to about 100 knots here real soon. So let's double check. I've got this. Uh... Okay, yeah, that looks like a 353. So I'm overcorrecting to get back onto that radial. And we can go down to 4,200. On that feeder leg, 4200 noted right here. The 200 on a 353 for 17 miles. And now the radial's starting to come back in. Again, hand flying it in from here, so I'll do my best to keep up with chat messages, guys, but uh, please be forgiving if I'm not as attentive as I otherwise would be. And again, a real nice, slow, shallow descent. We got 15 miles to go. We're 2.7, maybe 14 miles to go. And we really only have uh, another 500 feet to lose here. So a nice, shallow, gentle descent. We don't need to rush down. Again, we've got that localizer frequency already in the standby, 1085, and the course, which we'll flip over to as soon as we get that swapped in, course is a 084. And Bowen is about to get a 10 minute timeout. ILS eight good fixings, but we're going to circle to uh, circle to two six. <laughs> I threatened ten minutes. I made it ten seconds. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Says Bellin. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the ILS eight, which is what we perform as part of the lesson, and then we're going to. Uh, we're going to circle the 2-6, and keep in mind, 
Uh, that chart at the upper left says you can't circle south of the runway. So in order to circle the 26, we're going to have to break off of the ILS-8 to the left, stay north of the airport, and make a right downwind. All right, so there's 4,200 now. Leveling it off, adding a bit of power back in. Watch here, guys. Still one degree below freezing, and uh, nice moisture layer that we're kind of passing right through. Struggling's already at uh, with gear and flaps. The kids stay behind me. Yeah, I understand, man. Apologize for holding you up, brother. <laughs> the good fix is just just VFR and it to two six. Yeah, I got you. So the so the, the wings eight, uh, good fixings. Um, it specifically requires that you fly that ILS eight. Um, but since the the prevailing winds are westerly, you know we're going to do that as a circling to two six. Ain't nobody got time for wings. What you talking about, witness? I prefer meatballs myself. We're staying on that radial. We're staying on that radial pretty well, actually. And taking that out to 16.9er. So we're 10.1. We got another six miles to go on that. So we'll keep the speed somewhat up here. We've got it just above the white arc. 16.9, then we basically turn on to the final approach course. And once we get established, we can go down to 3,100 by nine miles out. Eleven point five. I know you guys can't see the DME, so that's why I'm trying to count up for you. So we're going sixteen point nine north and west of that Concord VOR, as as depicted on that chart, which I showed you a moment ago. We're twelve point oh, twelve point one. And at that point, we're gonna we're gonna flip the and we'll we're taking. We'll probably turn a little short. We're going to start the turn maybe at 15.9. Try and make a nice smooth join onto that localizer. 084 course. So what we'll do now, let's flip the heading bug over to 084 now so we kind of have a sense of what we're turning to. And it'll also help us line up that arrow when we go to spin it. So there's 90, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 clicks left. So almost a 90 degree right turn here. Well, actually, I think it, it's a 91 degree right turn. <laughs> oh, I know I owe a bunch of you guys some raffle tickets. I saw those redemption requests go in earlier and didn't uh, didn't think to circle back. But we'll get those punched in uh, once we get down on the ground, guys. And it is going to be this is going to be the last one tonight. It's only going to get to the seven and the eight tonight. So we'll we'll cycle the number nine back into the schedule somehow. All right, 14.4, 14.5. Again, the target DME for the turn is 16.9, so we'll start it at 15.9. And then we'll f at the same time we start that turn, we will, st we will flip the NAV1 frequency over to the localizer, which is 1085. We've already got it in the standby. We'll turn the course knob to match the heading bug there of 084. I'm going to zoom in on it real quick and check. Uh, I guess that's 084 there. 
Okay, there's 15.7, 15.8, 15.9, okay. So we'll go ahead and start the turn. I'm going to pull just a touch of power out. We're going to swap the... Coming right in now. I should still technically be at 42 until I'm established on that loke. But I guess the rule of thumb is if you're less than half scale deflected, you're kind of established on the loke. So now we can come down to 3,100 until nine miles out. We're at 14.2 now. I think I see a runway up ahead too, guys. This will be a really easy one. <laughs> we'll still fly it to spec, though. We're, we'll still go by the numbers, but I mean, I could could go visual from here. I see the flashing lights right up ahead. So again, 3,100 now until nine miles. We're at 13.2 at the moment. Laconia traffic, Moody 514 Delta Victors is established on the localizer runway 8. We're at 12 and a half miles out. We're going to be circling the runway 26, Laconia. Laconia traffic, Sheriff's 114, Papa Papa's circling right downwind to base to final for runway 26. Uh, so he, he, uh, he shortcutted me. He leapfrogged me at some point. <laughs> Which is only fair. We're going to slowly increase the uh, mix and props also. Going to add some power back in. Looks like we made it up, made out okay with the weather. We're now two degrees above freezing and uh, no icing to, to speak of. Looks like the right fuel tank is uh, still heaviest and we're selected on it, so we're good there. Again, 3,100 feet. Yeah, we're still ways out. I think I see him. All right, there's 3,100 until 9 miles, and we're 10.2 miles now. BFR is faster. <laughs> yep, we see him. We see him on short final right there above the runway. So 3,100 feet until we're inside of nine miles, and we see the localizer and glide slope are pretty much centered also. So we are joining at the final approach fix. Again, circling minimums are basically 1,200, and field elevation is uh, 545. Okay, inside of nine now, we can start descending via the glide slope. Pull some power down. Yeah, it's yelling at me because I don't have flaps and gear in yet. I will do that. Let's pitch the nose up a little bit, make sure we're below the white arc. Go ahead and get flaps one in gear. It'll stop yelling at me now. Now it's now it doesn't mind that I've got no power in because it thinks I'm pretty getting ready to land, which I am. <laughs> now in doing that we've come a little bit above the glide slope profile. But uh, back on that glide slope. Yeah, now let's get back into a little bit more reasonable descent rate. There we go. We'll keep it at about 100 knots. Since we're going to do the circling maneuver, we we'll pretty much keep it at 100 knots until we. Uh, Charlie Victor is 11 miles out, established also 8, circling 26, going to be right traffic, currently 90 uh, down the. Final, we have Delta Victor inside, will 5-1-4 Delta Victor, thank you, and uh, Laconia traffic, we're six miles out on the ILS-8, keeping 100 knots in it. We're going to uh, circle uh, on the right downwind to runway 26, Laconia.
All right, so we can go as low as 1200 if we need it to see the runway. But uh, with the field elevation being 545, I think we'll aim for about uh, 1550 for a uh, for a, uh, pattern altitude. We're a little bit right of center line. We're a little bit below glide slope, so we'll fix both of those things. But we're about to just transition to the point where we're joining a left down, joining a right downwind anyway, breaking left to join right downwind. Okay, so there's localizer and glide slope back in it. Take it down to 1550. Laconia traffic, 25 before Delta Victors, three and a half mile final on ILS 8. We're starting the maneuver for the left correction. The right down, we're runway 26 Laconia. Okay, so we'll keep 1550 in it and 100 knots, pretty much ignoring the uh, localizer and glide slope at this point. The only thing that localizer is good for now is kind of get it, giving us our runway heading. So right now I'm just widening that base turn a little bit. Looks like we got a little bit of a hillside over there. Yeah, I'm sorry, so Smitty's correct. You guys can start putting some landing rate predictions in. Uh, I'm slipping on the altitude here. Landing rate predictions in, just a number into the uh, into the chat. Now the, yeah, number into the chat, positive or negative, no bot command necessary. And uh, no prize for that today, just, to, just kind of guessing for funsies. But uh, see, we'll see who's closest. It's not Price is Right rules. It's not closest without going over. It's just closest. Uh, good fixings. Could you fly the back course? So, so yes and no. Yes, I, the, the back course certainly will help me line up with the runway on that side. Um, but there's no um, there's no back course approach to, to to you know to chart altitudes off of. But yes, the the localizer coming in on the opposite side, you know, will definitely kind of help me line it up. That's for sure. Alright, so we're being the uh, numbers. Laconia traffic, 25 before down to Victor's, right down wind, runway 26, beam the numbers, Laconia. And we're going to kind of turn it in short here. Going to watch this terrain. Flaps 2. Gears already down, and green. Down to 90 knots. 190, we can go flaps three. 80 knots. Oh, that's a road. Oh, there's the runway. <laughs> A little high. Uh, we should be able to make this work. 75 down final and 70 over the numbers is kind of what I aim for. Here's one Charlie Victor maneuvering for right downwind. So 75, bringing it down to 70. Happy's we're happy now. That now they say we're a little low. I think we're, I think we're okay though. I think we're fine. Take it.
88 is the magic number, guys. 88. And, uh, I had said right turn off. Yeah, it looks like we can go kind of either way here, but I had said right turn off, so that's what we'll do. Cross the hold line, we'll clean up. Throw the flaps, strobe lights, recognition lights, landing lights. Laconia traffic, 25, we're about to make clear 26. Laconia. Looks like our uh, friend is right there in the midfield downwind. Security already checking us out. Good gracious. This is one Charlie Victor. Now being the numbers, uh, right traffic T6 will stop. Our, uh, traffic. our reputation precedes us here, obviously. All right, let's see if we can get parked at the ramp and then we'll check out our friend's uh, arrival. All right. Looks like a good as place as good a place as any. Although that looks like a nicer building. It's probably where the airport bar is, so we'll go over there. And Laconia again, guys, I guess I didn't go through the radio calls as much, but Laconia again being a non-towered air airfield, you wouldn't have gotten a cleared to land as much as you would have gotten a uh you know, no, no traffic observed between you and the field. Uh, frequency change with advisories approved. Report IFR cancellation in the air or on the ground. This frequency. So that's kind of how that goes. That non-towered airport, and then you would make your CTAF calls on this frequency, just like we were doing anyway. How are we doing? I see one turning base to final now. Let's see if we can up the camera speed here. Hello, Cody Traffic, uh, one turn to two miles, short final, two six, full stop, Cody. Yes. Meow. <laughs> so showing up. I think he said he was a Cirrus. Uh, yeah. Vision jet showing up as a Cessna caravan for us. That's all right, we'll get the idea. Sorry, I'm not real good with these controls. <laughs> Ooh, kind of a hard hit there at the end, but that could have been a uh, elevation adjustment. I don't know if he's in the, uh, if he's in a vision jet, he's probably in X-plane. So it might not have looked as, uh, as precipitous a drop on his end as it, as, it, as it did ours. A little bit of a scenery elevation difference between X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Sim sometimes makes it look like that when it's a uh, when it's a last minute adjustment by the pilot client to show him on the ground. So hopefully, Trugly, it looked a little bit better. Oh yeah, so he says negative 58. So it didn't look like that from our end, but I'm assuming that's that last minute altitude correction that the uh, that the pilot client makes to equalize our scenery elevation. So it happens sometimes, but it didn't look too graceful from our end, but uh, it seemed like it was a nice stable approach and Chugley does confirm that uh, that his was nice and smooth on the arrival. 58, he said, 88 was ours. What were our predictions? 
So, Smitty opened up the bidding with a 90. That's darn close. 104 from Papa Charlie, 169. Good fixings. 88 was the prediction from Trugly, and Dunk Mac came in with the 89. And, uh, boy, Trugly didn't seem too happy about that. But, boy, I guess he's happy now. He would have been a nice 500-point winner there on that one. So, normally when we do the giveaways on this channel, um, what we do is we... Uh, we give you 500 points minus the difference over two rounds. So the total points for the night being 1,000 points. So if you nail it right on the head, you end up with a perfect 1,000 points. And uh, boy, Charlie would have gotten a 500-pointer. Uh, we're going to take a left here at Alpha uh, 4 Whiskey Papa, if you want to wait. Nah, so yeah, it would have been a 500-pointer there for uh, for Chugley, but Dunk Mac would have come in with a nice 499-pointer. Uh, Smitty there with a 498-pointer. A bunch of you guys would have been right in the running. With those, uh, with those guesses. Let's get back into the plane and uh, close up shop here. And uh, so hopefully you guys got a nice taste of how that uh, that procedure goes. And uh, certainly don't hesitate to uh, jump into the Discord with us and ask questions about anything that you saw tonight. But uh, do appreciate you flying along. Just bear with me for just a, f a few seconds as we get the, uh, the plane shut down and we'll check on that fuel and EPA as well. Um, so we did get the parking brake on. Taxi light, I think we got off. Maybe? No, we didn't. There it is. <laughs> the uh, transponder, we can go ahead and reset that to 1200. And as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and turn it off at this point. And we can get the elevator trim reset. Put a little more nose down in it. Get it back into that takeoff range, although it's just neutralizing it for parking here on the ramp. And uh, I think that's it. We'll go ahead and check the ETA, the revised ETA, after we uh, after we departed five after um, was 11.03 on the ground, 11.08 on the blocks. And, man, I think we pretty much nailed that. We were maybe even a little bit earlier. Should have 189 pounds of fuel left. Let's see how we did with that. Uh, we actually were a little bit more fuel efficient than expected, 113, 114. So that's going to be 227, right? 227 pounds, 228 pounds if you add the uh, change there. So yeah, we were a little bit more fuel efficient than we expected to be. And as a matter of fact, since we were fuel efficient on both legs, I'm going to go into my aircraft table and I'm going to bump down the uh, hourly burn from 80 pounds to 75 pounds, just to see if that gets us a little closer in the ballpark the next time around. But anyway, yeah, so the estimates, of course, we, we, like I said, we were also a little early, so that accounted for some of that extra fuel, but we were uh, underneath the fuel figures for both legs tonight. So I'm going to lower my fuel consumption table and see if we can get that a little bit better dialed in for the... Uh, for the next stream. Okay, transponder off. Let's get the secondary radios off here now. That is there and there. And I think we can get the radio master off. That's that one. Go ahead and pull the uh, pull the mix lever into cutoff. We get that stupid log that we do not need. Get it out of the way. All right, there we go. Watch the watch the engine cut. And we'll go ahead and feather the prop as well. Magnetos now can go to the off position. And there they are. Fuel selector, go to the off position. The nav and beacon lights can be shut off. And I think the battery switch, the alternator and the battery, will be the last thing, right? All right. Well, thank you. Says, great session as usual, says Al. Going to start practice, practice, practice. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Appreciate you flying along with us tonight, Al. And uh, those of us who, those of you guys who actually flew along, Chudley and, uh, and who else? Smitty? I think there was a total of four. I didn't even catch who the fourth one was. So whoever the fourth one was, we definitely appreciate you being here, guys. And uh, always welcome to make it a group flight on the Slant Alpha channel. Although uh, I was a bad host and I did not open up the uh, the Discord uh, voice channel. I, I, guys should remind me to do that. If you're going to fly along, uh, at least if you'd like to, open up the Discord voice channel and you're flying along. Oh, good fixings, it was you. Okay, there you go. Excellent. I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, remind me in the stream chat, guys, if you're flying along and you want to open up the Discord voice channel. Um, I mean, our, our coordination on 122.8 actually was pretty good. So, it worked out just fine. 
Um, but anytime you want to open up that voice channel, if you're if you're flying along with us or if you're providing ATC, if you're participating in the featured flight or the stream in any way, uh, I, I don't I don't pro probably want to open it up for casual chit chat um, other than you know related to that night's flight. But uh, certainly if you want to uh, fly along or if you're providing ATC services for us, don't don't uh, hesitate to remind me to go ahead and open up that voice channel in the Discord if you would like. And again, if that's that's if you want, you don't have to. All right. Let's uh, talk about what's coming up next on the stream. By the way, if you ever want to know what's coming up next on the stream in the short term, you can always follow us on Facebook or Twitter. We're Slant Alpha on both of those. Links at the bottom of your screen there. And we kind of keep you abreast on what is coming up next. And uh, we will be posting that stuff in just a few. The full show schedule is down underneath the About tab. Uh, on the uh, picture window there, hit the About tab, all kinds of good information on the stream there, uh, in addition to our full show schedule, which is also posted on our Facebook page, and is also posted on our Discord server, and the invite link to that, by the way, is down there at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. We did talk earlier about the YouTube channel. It functions as our um, flight archive, so anytime you want to see any of our old flights, you can check that out over there. It also has uh, some tutorials playlists. We've got some VATSIM tutorials that cover IFR routing, VFR routing, flight time and fuel estimates like we were talking about, uh, the slant uh, equipment codes, slant alpha, slant whiskey, slant golf, what's all that stuff mean? You got a tutorial for that. Uh, we actually, I, forgot, I keep forgetting we added one to that channel. We added a uh, slant whiskey routing tutorial. So if you want to figure out how to, f how to come up with a route that those vintage airliners can fly, you can certainly check that one out that we added just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, and then I guess the other tutorial playlist over there, uh, we've got a tutorial for the working title CJ4 mod. We have two different versions of that now. i got to do an updated version. Uh, i trying to maybe get that done this weekend for you. But uh, other than that, uh, the, the third and final playlist is these very flights, these wings over New England training flights. We've got a, a series now of uh, IFR, VFR 1 through 6 and IFR after tonight gets uploaded to YouTube. IFR now 1 through 8. And we'll resume next time we do these Boston flights we'll resume with IFR numero nueve er, nueve er, I guess to say it properly. <laughs> Alright, the next show coming up by the way is uh, we're normally on f Mondays and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. This week, we're a little bit off schedule because we're going to be off on the 14th, and we're flying uh, one of our favorite annual VATSIM events on Saturday the 15th. We're flying in what they call Cal Scream, California Screaming. We've got somebody departing here from Laconia. California Screaming is on f uh, Saturday the 15th, and we're going to get started at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time, which is going to be 22.15 Zulu on Saturday the 15th. We've got two legs booked over on the uh, calscream.com website. Plenty of slots still open, by the way, if you want to get in on that action. It's a joint effort between Oakland and Los Angeles ARTCCs, and they staff up. This time it's 16 different uh, large and medium-sized airports in the NorCal and SoCal areas. And there's all these different flights you can book between them, and they get planes zipping across between these 16 airports in every which direction. Uh, one of the most comprehensive real ops events that they do on that sim, and the beauty of it is, it's not like the traditional flight where everyone is, is congregating at one single airport, or it's not like, um, you know, a crossfire between two airports and, and everyone's in a big long line and like, you know, 10,000 passengers need to get from airport A to airport B. This is a much more realistic real ops event. Um, where as you take off from Oakland, you've got traffic coming out of San Francisco, but you've got traffic coming into San Francisco. You've also got traffic coming out of San Juan. You've got traffic going up to Fresno. Um, you know, just every you know kind of medium to large size airport in NorCal and SoCal is all featured as part of this event. So uh, go over there and book a couple slots and join in the fun. You can even fly VFR uh, or or general aviation IFR between any of the featured fields and just add to the mix of traffic. They just love it. The idea is to get as much traffic going in different directions as possible and mix it all up instead of having that one big giant conga line. So a lot of fun, great event. Saturday the 15th, and again, our stream's going to start 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time. We've got uh, two legs that we're going to do for you in the Flight Factor 757. So you're going to see Captain Slant Captain Slant Lima on uh, on Saturday the 15th, and uh, we're going to fly from 
uh, where are we flying from? San Francisco down to San Diego and then to Sacramento. We're hitting all the S airports in uh, NorCal and SoCal. San Francisco, SFO, uh, down to San Diego, Lindbergh Field, and then on up to uh, Sacramento. So should be a fun one. And uh, again, in that Flight Factor 757, we're going to just fly that traditional slant Lima, meaning the uh, full uh, full avionics suite, the FMC and you know all the normal LNAV and VNAV stuff. But it's awful fun to watch uh, a GA guy kind of stumble back through and remember all those old procedures for flying in the airliners. So uh, I do it from time to time, so it's not something I haven't done before. But uh, it's always fun to watch me kind of stumble through that and then try to remember my call sign. That's probably the biggest challenge in life is going to be remembering my call sign all night. So check that out. You can check out last uh, yeah, last year's Cal Scream uh, was one of the last streams I did with my old computer. So I still did that in the PMDG 737 and FSX. So this will be my first Cal Scream on this rig. And we'll fly it in uh, X-Plane in nice, uh, beautiful uh, high definition and in the, uh, in the nice... Uh, nice high frame rates in that uh, Flight Factor 757 for X Plane 11. So that'll be Saturday. Uh, then Sunday, we've got a real cool event called the Fox Hunt that's sponsored by the Washington ARTCC and the Virtual USA Flying Club. So we will uh, we will talk a little bit more about that on Saturday. But we're going to be ha we're going to have a bunch of folks from the Virtual USA Flying Club uh, hunting all over the the. ZDC airspace looking for three hidden crates at any hidden at any of the airports within ZDC. So that's going to be a fun one. We'll talk more about that soon. Uh, but if you want to get in on that, we got some awesome prizes sponsored by uh, Drzwecki Design or however you say that. And we've also got uh, Carinado sponsoring some giveaways. And then uh, even I'm pitching in a little bit of, of uh, fun stuff for the giveaways for uh, the Virtual USA Flying Club on Sunday. That uh, Fox Hunt that starts at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So again, uh, off of my normal schedule, both this coming Friday and the following Monday, um, but two really cool events this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So hope to see you then. Uh, in the meantime, do uh, be safe in your own travels and your own adventures and stay healthy as well, guys. And uh, so we will see you Saturday from Northern California. And uh, in the meantime, I'll talk to you then. Oh, 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 one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. Who are we, uh, who are we sending this raid to? <laughs> well, Continuum is on, but he's not flying. Um, our friend Dane Flats has a new venture of some sort going. I'm not even really sure what it is. I think it might be some of his old broadcasts or something. I'm, I'm not completely sure. But this is our friend Dane Flats. And he's got something going on that he's now calling Dane On Demand. So uh, we'll send you over to Dane Flats in some form or fashion here on the channel called Dane on demand. So let's uh, let's kick kick you over to him and uh, enjoy what our friend Dane Flats has going, guys. Uh, he's always a lot of fun. He's not always family friendly, but he's always a lot of fun. So uh, so check him out. I can't tell if he's wrapping up or getting started or what's going on over there. Um, but our friend Dane on demand, go ahead and check him out. And oh, is he ra he, he is wrapping up? Yeah, I think he's closing up the show. Uh, Good fixing says NYA or TCC controllers on. Let's let's see what he's up to. Sorry guys, I'm I'm normally a little bit better prepared for this. Work in New York approach. All right, we'll go ahead and send the raid to him. Thank you, Good Fixes, for the recommendation. Everybody that has uh. Everybody that has uh, raffle ticket redemption requests, and by the way, we'll take care of those. As soon as we get the stream shut down, we'll take care of those. So don't worry about that. I'll I'll post acknowledgments in the uh, in the Discord. 
Alright guys, so uh, stay tuned for, for NYA or TCC controller. He's working New York approach on that sim, so if you ever want to see how that sim looks from the other side of the scope, of course we do that occasionally on this channel as a tower controller, but tonight you get to watch New York approach if you stay tuned for NYA or TCC controller. Uh, thanks very much again for stopping in and seeing us tonight, and uh, again, we'll talk to you on Saturday from subs from san francisco so in the meantime again so be healthy and safe in your own travels and your own adventures guys and it's definitely time for me to wrap up so we'll see you later